Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's Breakfast with Boom. I am your host, Mr. Boomstick XL, and my goodness, we have such an amazing show for you planned, and by the amount of people that are already in the chat, it appears that maybe, and again, I don't know this for sure, that some notifications from YouTube have gone out. I know that I've been getting a lot of messages about the show, uh, yesterday's show that went live at noon. People were getting <laughs> notified by YouTube at 11 p.m. in the evening. Uh, so I apologize for any delay. Unfortunately, it has uh, completely been taken out of my control, and I've been complaining, but you know what? With that all said, we are going to start talking about games. But before we do, let's talk about our incredible panel that we have. And I'm going to start with someone that I like to consider family. Someone that Joe said and I, uh, Mrs. Boomstick, if you don't know, haven't officially met but are hoping to one day. He is responsible for some of the best artwork in the business. His kindness and caring for other people outside of himself and his family is limitless. And his talent is second to none. I want to introduce the graphic god. Welcome, dude. Thank you very much. It's been a long time coming that I've been back on Breakfast with Boom. I think I might have been on one or two in the past. Um, my work schedule's really been keeping me from getting on, but uh, I appreciate the offer. And because of these times, you know, um, I don't have to be out of the office, out of the out of the home. So I was available to be here, and uh, I just appreciate the offer. So thank you very much, Boom. You know what? Real quick, before we get to the rest of the uh, the the panel, I'm going to bring up a, a, a slide over here. Now, obviously, I have to push this gentleman's uh, graphic god production simply because he is responsible for every intro and every piece of artwork that I have on my channel. Um, and even though I've been offered by many others. Uh, to do work for me, uh, even uh, Pro Bo, uh, I have said no because I, I'm loyal and I do appreciate the bond that Jay and I have. So, Jay, why don't you tell the the people listening, and then maybe on the back end uh, when we do some outros, you can really get into this, uh, you know, the particulars. Why don't you tell everybody about Graphic God Productions and what exactly you do? Sure. Um, so, Graphic God Productions is basically just an extension of what I've been doing for a very long time. I've been creating gamer picks ever since Xbox was allowing custom gamer picks. I kind of jumped on that as soon as I could, knowing that I was doing it in the past um, for people just randomly. Uh, people wanted, you know, some some unique images for their uh, gamer picks on Xbox and other platforms. So, I decided to start pushing that. I uh, created a website called XboxGamerPicks.com, and you can go there and basically order a gamer pick for me and the price ranges are from nickels to a little more expensive depending on the quality you want um but not only do i do gamer picks i also do banners for your um, social media yeah i do logos for your businesses i do intros like the one you just saw on uh breakfast with boom and if you ask me to do a gamer pick for you i'll normally throw it on a t-shirt and put it up on redbubble so you can purchase it if you want it as well and I take custom orders that way. So that's uh, basically it. Um, I provide graphics for anyone that needs them and in all shapes and forms from stills to movement. Um, yeah, hit me up. Uh, my Twitter handle is there, graphic underscore God, or go to xboxgamerpicks.com and hit me there. Um, you know, my DMs are open. I chat to anyone and uh, nothing's off the table. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so I appreciate that. Yeah, so head over to Xbox Gamer Picks. Drop um, him a line through DM and tell him Mr. Boomstick sent you just so he knows where you heard the information. Now, next up, we have the defender of PlayStation Nation, but also a community member who is known as a trophy hunter and even puts Indiana Jones to shame. Please welcome my very good friend, BitCloud Gaming. Wow, I put Indiana Jones shit. Wow, that's a that's a new that, that's, a tall, that's a tall order, but yes, your your trophy <laughs> hunting skills are not to be denied. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? Appreciate the uh, invite as always, Mister Boom. Uh, good to finally talk to Mister Graphic God, obviously Forte and uh, Sub Nuke. It's uh, definitely going to be an interesting show. So go ahead, hit that like button and tweet it out because YouTube notifications are definitely 
while they're on the fritz. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit wacky right now, but you know what? We're here to talk about games. We're going to have fun, even if two people are listening, uh, because you know what? At the end of the day, right now, the world is in flux, and it's a scary yep. situation. And you know what? Kind of hanging back, playing your favorite game, catching up on your backlog, which I'm sure every one of us has, and just listening to a podcast is going to ease some of that tension. Sure. Is it going to take away what's going on? No. Only Mother Nature and time is going to do that. But for right now, we can just chill. So let's get into the remainder of the outstanding panel. And I'm going to talk with someone that I had the potential of meeting in real life. Someone that I like to consider a family member or an extended part of my family. I have never met him. And now I'm going to change that as well. Someone that I like to consider as not only one of the community's finest, but his his podcasting skills, which his arms reach is about five shows now. Please welcome <laughs> Gaming Forte. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is that because I ain't got nothing else to do other than play games and sit at home? So yeah, that's well, all we're doing right that's now. That's the gamer's life right there, brother. <laughs> yeah, it is the gamer's life right now. Yeah, man, it's always good to um, grace the Friday mornings. Normally I'm at work today, but um, boom, put out the call, and I had to come answer because um, – who doesn't want to get up first thing in the morning and talk about games and everything that happened throughout the week? So thanks for the invite as always, bro. I definitely super appreciate you being here. And, uh, of course, we're going to have a great show. And last but not least, the nastiest man on Twitter, a very good friend of mine all the way from Canada, someone that I do appreciate his banter and his dark humor. Please welcome Noof Nukem. Boom, boom, kaboom, it's new in the room. What a fantastic panel. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Boom, and especially to be here with my Canadian brother, the graphic god, BitCloud, Gaming Forte. This is going to be a lit show. The chat is already getting going here. Got to love it, man. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, very appreciative to have been here. And what can I say, man? Last two days, I've basically been just uh, firing bombs at some of these turd nuggets that are on uh, social media. That, I think uh, you've been very busy. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I got more brain cells in my big toe than some of these guys. Let me tell you. But uh, yeah, let's let's get to it, brother. All right. You know what? I want to. What I want to do is um, I want to bring up a, a topic uh, that Noof brought to my attention uh, very late last night. Actually, I think it was. It might have been like eleven thirty at night. Um, I was playing Doom, which I just absolutely adore. I think it's amazing. Um, and, um, I, 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 he sent me this topic and I, I wanted to make it the first one. Cause I, I think that there is something interesting now, you know, partnerships and collaborations are pretty much common ground within gaming, especially when you're talking about a developer and publisher working together. Now, normally it's usually a quick mention at an article. Uh, it's a tweet. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's briefly discussed and moved on, on, you know, your local, you know, your favorite podcast. Um, well, you know, something huge happened uh, yesterday, late yesterday, as a matter of fact, and thanks, of course, to the eagle eyes of Noof Nukem, we have just learned that Remedy Entertainment, makers of Alan Wake, Quantum Break, and the recently released outstanding game called Control has partnered with Epic Games, makers of Fortnite, on two game, it's a two game publishing deal. Now, Remedy Entertainment has signed with Epic Games to publish Remedy's next two unannounced titles. The games are part of Epic's um, new developer first publishing effort, effort, giving full creative freedom and IP ownership to its development partners. And this is big because obviously we know that Remedy. Um, there's been talk about Microsoft buying them. There's been talk about Sony buying them. And they kind of really want to stay independent. And I got to be honest with you, hearing that Epic Games is just doing the publishing, letting them keep the IP and giving them full control is pretty interesting. I mean, they're, they're doing some things much differently in their realm of uh, of you know entertainment than anyone else is doing and they really are changing the game of course no pun intended the first project is remedy's most ambitious title yet according to the article uh it's a triple a multi-platform game and it's already in pre-production here is where it gets interesting though the second one is obviously a new title but it's a smaller scale project 
set in the same franchise. So it's kind of going to be maybe a, an offshoot or a side, you know, a side story of whatever they're working on. Now, both games are, are going to be obviously developed in Remedy's proprietary um, state of the art North Light game engine and will be released um, in, for the next generation um, consoles. Now, before I get to the panel's uh, you know, opinion, and of course, I'll jump right into the chat as well. Let me read the exact press release from both Remedy and Epic Games. And this is what it says Remedy and Epic Games share a history of 25 years in the in the games industry as well as a deep understanding of the business from the developers and publishers point of view we are excited to form a partnership with epic games publishing and bring two new games to the global audience this partnership provides us with full creative freedom to deliver our bold new vision to the fullest Together with Epic, we believe we are going to create the best Remedy games yet for our fran fans. And this comes from CEO Terrio Vertala. And, uh, of course, this is um, the next one. This is coming from um, uh, the CEO uh, Tim Sweeney of Epic Games. And he says this. We have a long history and relationship with Remedy going on, one, um, going on more than two decades they're such an incredibly talented studio with a unique and strong creative vision, and we're excited to support them with our publishing efforts. Both games will be launched on next generation console platforms and PC in the next few years. So, you know, BitCloud, I want to go to you first on this, because obviously when you talk about Remedy, it depends on who you ask. Some people will say, well, when I think of Remedy, I kind of think of like, you know, Xbox because they released Quantum Break and two uh, two Alan Wake titles, one being yeah. a big one and one uh, being you know the, the arcade version, uh, 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 Alan Wake's American Nightmare, which I absolutely loved. And then depending on who you ask and their age, some people will say, well, you know, I when I think of them, I think of Sony because they had a deal with Control, they had the publishing rights for that, and you know, uh, you know, I, and again, I'm, I'm gonna throw this out there. Uh, right now, I think Control is available on um, um, PS Now. And if you have not played this game, my God, you need to play it because it is amazing. It is really a fantastic game. If you liked Quantum Break, it's that with superpowers. I loved every minute of it. I cannot wait to play the DLC. There's been rumors of the DLC, the next one being uh, having Alan Wake involved, which I really hope it is because that means they're crossing universes and that would be dope. But, you know, BitCloud, when you hear... That they've signed with Epic Games, which obviously, they, they, I mean, there's no one bigger than Epic Games right now. Um, what are your thoughts on this publishing deal? But more importantly, what do you think they're working on? Yeah, so when I think of Remedy, I don't think of either, any of those games. I go back to PS2 with Max Payne. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. That's what I always remember, Mess. But um, whatever they're working on, hmm. You know, that's a, I guess it's a stretch, right? Because we don't really know, you know, going off of a track record. Well, they um, the last game they made I was mean, like a quantum are, break. They... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like the last two games they made were basically inspired by the same type, you know, it was quantum yes. break style. So mm -hmm. the question is, would they continue with that particular style or would they go back to like the novel storytelling style mm, like Max Payne? Honestly, I wouldn't mind. They went did something like that. Go back to like the graphic novel approach bring back the nostalgic feels and just go with like a not necessarily a revenge story because that would be complete you know max Payne, you know copy but i would say just do something that we know for a fact we haven't seen from them in a while if that makes sense right something more ambitious than uh we've already seen you know i'm hoping i know it sounds this is a bit of a stretch there, there's two there's two angles that i look at from here one i would love to see a brand new ip uh, because we saw what they did with Control, mm -hmm. and the storytelling was fantastic. The action was was fa was dope. The destructibility was just not to be believed. Like it was pretty incredible how w you know you would literally rip through walls with yeah. some of, of some of the powers. And you and and depending on you know what what TV you're using and obviously where you're playing it, you I mean even seeing like the rubble on the floor, it was it's very impressive. The so, thing about it too, if they continue with that style of game, 
um, especially with the next gen consoles, mm, the yeah. destructibility would be even be greater. Bananas. You know, it'd be even greater. So again, it's really a win-win if they stay with the the course that they're doing, just improve. You know, continue to improve on their storytelling and just yes. deliver with the engine, or they can go back, like I said before, to their roots type of thing, and you know, shock us with like a Max Payne style game or something new. You know, for the newer generation, not necessarily have to be Max Payne. It could be like something from the newer gen. And uh, introduced him to that style. That makes sense to that type of genre. No, that makes that actually makes perfect sense. To be quite honest with you, um, and, and I'll listen, I, I say this: you know, gaming forte. I want to grab you in here for a second because you know, obviously, when you consider the storied history of both Remedy and Epic Games, to me anyway, it seems like a match made in heaven, right? And uh, what's also very interesting here is Epic Games is looking to become the next big publisher. And when and, and I think by them doing this, you know, you know, with, first of all, they challenged Steam uh, w w with the way that they were giving more back to the developer, right? Um, and of course, now they're challenging the big publishers by saying, "Hey, little man, you want to put a game out over here? It's cool. We, you know, you own the IP. You have creative freedom. We're just going to publish it. Go crazy." And that's challenging the likes of Activision, EA, Microsoft, and even Sony, for that matter, um, who, you know, again, to, to, to both Microsoft and Sony's defense, they're much better publishers, much better publishers. Um, you know, we've seen what Sony does. They're not afraid to delay a game. We see that the changes in Microsoft. EA and Activision, eh, not so much. You know what I'm saying? They're still the scumbags of the, of, of the universe, right? We, we know that to be true. What are your thoughts on them? doing this with this partnership but selfishly enough do you want it to be an ip that we've already played or do you want a new ip uh i think everybody will basically say they want a new ip because <clears throat> um over the course of time you know um we don't we most people that know who remedy is already went down the rabbit hole when it comes to games like alan wake um, and then control being neuro, and now they're talking about something like a second ver another part to control, and they're actually adding on to that story. Then you know, that's something I think a lot of people will sign up for too, just because I was a huge fan of Quantum Break, I loved it. You know, Me too. just the gameplay in general, uh, the stylized graphics, the way that they um integrated the TV show into it. I know some people didn't too much, too much care for that, but for me. It was um it was kind of a break away from the game. Whenever I did get to those parts, I actually got to sit back and watch what was going on. I was a huge fan of shows like 24 and stuff. So when I saw stuff like that, I was like, oh, cool. And it's really cool how they're they're integrating that stuff into the game. And um, it didn't get enough credit for what they actually did um, to bring that game to life. But um, Control seems to be doing much better Yes, uh, on top of what that game did, and mostly because it was a multiplayer on top of that. And I think the one thing I like about the the thing that they're doing with Epic is the fact that they're not signed. It's like Epic didn't purchase them. They was like, right. it's more like a mercenary move at this point. They're sitting there saying, you have something that we think you guys can definitely bring to the platform, but not just to our platform, to other platforms in general, because, you know, Epic understands what's going on. They say they, they're, they're still people were wondering if they were going to still go down this line of giving creators and developers the biggest cut that they could possibly give them by bringing games to their platform. And this is just another move in saying that that's something they're doing. They said, we don't need to purchase you for you to still, you know, thrive in our ecosystem under the umbrella of Epic. You know, you can still put your games other places. We just want to be here so we can support you. And then we still get the cut that we deserve from it, but you're still getting the bigger cut. And that's something that I think a lot of developers are going to start looking for in the um, near future. Not saying that not being purchased by one of these bigger entities isn't still the ultimate goal for some companies. But for some of these companies, a lot of them don't want to be purchased. And yeah. this is the next greatest step saying, hey, you're just like it's just like Marvel. And it's just like how Spider-Man signed for two or three movies through the Marvel Universe. And then you end up getting um, 
Spider-Man, you know, that's basically how the whole epic thing were not epic, but that's how the whole thing, the whole thing happened with the Marvel Universe. We wouldn't have gotten that if Sony didn't sign over and say, hey, we will allow Marvel to make these two Spider-Man games and Spider-Man movies in that universe. And that's what I think is happening here. So the president is there for um this to continue in the future um it only just really comes down to what is the next developer that's going to come down and decide to do this but i will always say i want to see a new game but if they did dabble and say control 2 is going to be something that's going to be underneath this umbrella i wouldn't be mad at that either because i think a lot of people want to see exactly where that storyline goes you know i mean look I i'm gonna say this i, I don't necessarily know where they're going to take control uh, I like to believe that because of what we saw and a lot of the things that we read, like if you played the game, there's a lot of reading. Uh, I wish I, there's lots of reading, like lots of reading. So if you like that, and I do, you learn a lot. There's a lot of instances and references and coincidences, if you will, to Alan Wake. There I is. think that the two can cross over easily. And they know we know that they own Alan Wake, right? We know that they own it because Microsoft, you know, either sold it back or gave it back or whatever. They have it. So they could I know that um oh man, I missed it. Something ninja in the chat said he wants an Alan Wake 2. Dude, I am right there with you. My God, do I need an Alan Wake 2 in my life? I actually still have the Alan Wake Collects edition that came in a book. I, I have it. Yeah, oh, that's dope. That's such that's such an awesome. I love collectors. I think everybody knows that already. But how long has it been since the last Alan Way? Uh, well, American Nightmare was a, was an arcade game. Yeah. I want to say that's got to be about yeah. seven or eight years yeah. old. Uh, Xbox Live arcade game. That's yes. what they call them arcade games. You're yes. right. That's a long time ago. Yeah. No, you know now when I think about them because I think that's the biggest thing when people think about it. They hear Alan Way and it's like, yeah, I would like to see them make something new, but. But it's just like anything else. It's been so long. A lot of people would. I, I think a lot of people would enjoy going back to that franchise because Me how too. long it's been since they've been there. So, so I think sometimes when they when people hear a name of something, they say, "Ah, oh, man, I kind of want them to make something different." But when it's been that long, we're talking about since three sixty at this point. Yes, this whole generation. <laughs> we're going into a whole new generation, and it pretty much skipped it. I, 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 you know, now that I think about it, I would like to see them jump back into it because it's been a while, a very long time since they actually talked about that franchise and like you said there is a lot of gold nuggets in um in control that can really it really is man yeah real quick uh dead rising ninja is the one in the chat that said that and yes i agree with you also i would like a quantum break too i'm not even gonna front i love that game i did i loved it so much i got 1000 out of 1000 achievements and that boss battle on hard oh my god it was ridiculous but you know what let me get noof nukem in here noof you know obviously we are starting to see a huge change in the industry, and Epic Games is at the forefront. And I'm not talking about, oh, you know, what they did with Fortnite and how they continue to innovate and potentially steal other people's ideas, you know, with the pointing system from Apex and whatever. But as a, as a, as a publisher, we saw that they really, really did something special when saying, okay, instead of X amount percentage, you come over to here, you put it on the Epic Game Store, and we're only going to take 14%. I believe that's what the number was, as opposed to almost, uh, I think it was 30-something percent. I think it was 12, not 14. It was 12%. And they, they, they shook the industry, right? They shook the pillars of heaven, so to speak. And now we're starting to see that they're getting into the publishing uh, the, you know, realm and offer this, this offer is, is is unlike anything anyone else is doing. Once again, they are you know leading the charge in making the industry better for its developers and more money for their developers. But but I also offering a safe space, so to speak. When you hear about this deal, are you are, are you expecting other developers to start going over to potentially publish games through epic and more importantly what do you want remedy to bring to the table in their next two titles well i'd say this is a win-win scenario for epic games and for remedy i mean first of all epic games is trying to grow their store they're trying to bring more unique ips and certainly bigger ips and bigger you know publishers on uh, and, and developers on board with them so very good move on their part uh, as for remedy well, 
you can have all the best games in the world, but if you don't have a strong publisher behind you, those games can sometimes fall on deaf ears, as they say. Uh, 505 games, not, no offense to those guys, but they're not exactly a big publisher. They, exactly, you know, not, yes. uh, they didn't exactly market the hell out of control. A lot, I think a lot of the fanfare came through the fans themselves, people who played it. A lot of people played Control because they liked Quantum Break or they were familiar with Remedy's reputation of making some pretty decent and untreated games like Alan Wake in the past and uh, Max Payne, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, it's too bad in a sense, too, that Remedy doesn't own that IP anymore to Max Payne, but there, that in itself is one of the problems, and this is why a lot of the developers want to hang on to their IPs, because when an IP becomes extremely successful, um, there's a lot of money left on the table. We saw how Minecraft made, uh, what's his name, like a like a billion dollars from Microsoft when they bought it out from him, whatever the guy's name was, Twitch or Snitch or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, so this this is the whole scenario, right? And we see that now with with uh, with Bun with Bungie and and Destiny. You know, they they yes, left Activision, but they wanted to take they wanted to take the IP with them because they saw there was definitely a a, a fan base and a, and an IP that was. Definitely surging in popularity is no question whether you love Destiny or hate the game. It does have, it is pretty popular. There's still a lot of people playing that game. Some people love it wholeheartedly. So, yeah, I mean, I like, to, I would love to see Alan Wake come back, but there, that in itself is, an, is interesting because Alan Wake, again, there, with this generation, the way the gamers have certainly gravitated, we know it in here. Everybody in this panel knows Alan Wake, probably loved the game. I know I loved it, uh, has a soft spot in my heart. A uh, fantastic game that definitely deserves a sequel, but will it get one? It's hard to say. Be just because, again, the gamers, the gaming landscape has changed. Gamers have changed. Their tastes have changed. Uh, and those typical, those sorts of games aren't exactly gangbusters anymore. They don't make people a lot of money. So, uh, that like they sell well, but we see like it's this multiplayer stuff. It's the free to play games that are making the tons of money and anything else. If it's not like a really big uh, title that people are really familiar with, like a resident evil game, which has stayed relevant because they've made so many games. Mm -hmm. Whereas now awake who, who remember in this generation, who remembers it? No, Kids that are just shame. buying an Xbox One, people that just picked up a PS4, I'd say 90% of them have no clue what Alan Wake is, don't know what Max Payne is. Most of these kids that buy a lot of games these days, too, they don't know their gaming history. They don't know anything about the back catalog, which is a, a reason, or two, that Gears has fallen off because the new kids don't know Gears like we knew Gears, right? Because a lot of these people that are coming into the generation are coming into the Fortnite generation, I yes. call it, you know? Yes, yep, yep. Uh, and that's a thing. So, But it's a great move uh, on both their parts. Epic Games, like I said, trying to bolster the store. And Remedy wants to have that. Cr There's nothing more important to a, a good developer than having creative freedom to, to take their IP, to take their visions and build it, but also have a good financial backing, someone that backs them up. And then having a platform to really put it out there where they can afford the advertising, where they can get it on the social media, where they can get it in a hundred different places that a smaller publisher has trouble getting. Uh, Plague's Tale. Now, if that had a big publisher, that would game would probably already be doing a lot better. I mean, it's done okay. Like, it's definitely a highly reviewed game. But it needs a bigger publisher because that, that fucking game is not easy to find, like, especially a physical copy. Yes. So they need to get that out there. Mm-hmm. Well, I will say this. Uh, I agree with you on everything you said. I think that 505 games, uh, you know, as a publisher, they're fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with them. They don't do anything wrong. They just don't have the arm. You, you understand? And when I say the arm, I'm, I'm talking about financial arm. Whereas you look at an Epic Games, well, <laughs> right now they're making money hand over fist. Um, I mean, you know, so we know, we know that they're financially strong as a publisher, the fact that they are putting out there in front that your IP is your IP and you have complete control over what you want to do. We're just here to financially back you. And they said that in the press release is a big deal. It has a really big deal. Now, Jay, uh, or, or AKA the graphic God, the reason why I waited to put, uh, to have you speak about this last is because I want, I wanted to, uh, you know, pose the question from a, um, a small business's point of view. Now, Remedy is may not be the biggest developer, right? We know that they're talented, and people will argue with people will get on their high horse and say, Boom, I hate Remedy. They suck. Their games take too long. They're janky. They're this. They don't, I, they, I don't like them. And I will get on my higher horse and tell you that you're not that you're wrong because I'm never going to say that your opinion is valuable and it's yours. Uh, but for me, 
you couldn't tell me that because, quite frankly, I really do enjoy their games. All the way back to the Max Payne days, but more specifically, Alan Wake. Alan Wake was an incredible tale. I can only imagine what an HDR ray tracing, and of course, I know I know that dry, um, a de- um, Dead Rising Ninjas actually said that ray tracing Alan Wake Come on, folks. I mean, you could only imagine, you know, we're not getting and we're going to talk about this on an upcoming story. We know that we're not getting a new Silent Hill for a while. Right. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, We we know Resident Evil made a big comeback and they're doing very well. Uh, Resident 2, game of the year for me personally, sold unbelievably well. Best selling uh, Capcom game three is going to be out next week. It's amazing. It's going to be fantastic. It, is there a place in this world for Alan Wake? I think so. But Jay, more more specifically, coming at this from a small business point of view, you have a, your own business. And if you had an opportunity to have someone with the publishing arm come in and say, listen, Jay, we're going to do all of your advertising for you. And we have the muscle to do it. All you need to do is produce the content. Don't we're not we're not going to get our hands in, um, you know, we're not going to tell you what to draw. We're not going to tell you who to draw for you draw whatever you want. Complete, uh, complete control. You, you would you would sign that deal in a second. So I got to be honest with you. Remedy signing this deal does not surprise me. My question to you is what games do you think um, are going to be coming out from them? And more importantly, are you surprised that uh, Remedy uh, that 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 more companies like Remedy are going to be joining Epic Games. Well, not at all. I mean, for the longest time, Steam has been the place to go when you needed games, right? Yes. For PC and things like that. Epic uh, has now, uh, you know, uh, basically put their foot in the sand, said, you know, we're now a competitor, you know, and now they need to bring in those IPs to get people to come to their store, basically. Um, it's, it's hard for me to even talk about things because you know being the being the third guy on the panel everything that i wanted to say has already been said but um all all i can say right now is that between these two companies uh remedy and epic um they either those stores have not sorry either of those publishers have not made a game that i haven't liked um i i've been a huge fan of epic games ever since jesus christ um all the gears games unreal you name it um, and then going into uh, Remedy, Remedy's not made a game I haven't liked. I, I played all I played all the Alan, Alan Wakes, uh, loved them. I played um, Max Payne's, loved them. It basically, like someone had already said earlier, this is a match made in heaven. Uh, if this, if Epic can help Remedy push their awesome games to the next level and get that promotion out there for their games. Um, you know, it's it's win win for everybody, in my opinion. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, but you know, let me ask you this. Let me let me let me keep it going with you. Uh, do you yourself want to see Alan Wake revisited? Damn right, I do. Okay. And you know, here's the thing. <laughs> I love Alan Wake. I I'm not the type of gamer who loves stories in a game. But what's the best thing about Alan Wake? The story. The story was amazing. When I finished that game, I was like, I was blown away. I was like, wow, that was like the coolest story that I played in almost any game in the last 20, 25, 30 years that I've been playing games. It just, it it took me to a place that I'd never been to in gaming, basically, because, you know, j- just look at what we're playing right now, Doom Eternal. What's the story in Doom Eternal? Guy goes down and kills everything. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Story, and that's what we all enjoy. Um, but with Alan Wake, there's this whole story about this guy, and is he in a is he in a story? Is he in his own book? Is he not in his own book? Why are these shadow people coming after him? Why is his wife dead? You know, like there's so many aspects of that game or of that story that just intrigue you and want you to play it more and more. Um, yeah, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but besides all that. Alan Wake is an amazing game, and if they come out with another Alan Wake because of this merger, then I'm all over it. You know what? I'm hoping, like like Forte was saying, it has been quite a bit since we got a proper Alan Wake, and because it's been man seven, eight, nine years, maybe even maybe maybe double digits, maybe it's ten years. 
they could logistically just rebrand it, you know, remake the original in in in, in a new, um, you know, a new way where it's it still retains what we loved about it, but it's 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 telling it from a a modern point of view, if you know what I mean. And because people don't know it, it's still going to be considered an IP for old bastards like most of us on the panel. No, well, not everybody. There's a lot of young kids here, but for for most of us. It's gonna be like, oh man, that they're remaking Alan Wake. That's dope. So I mean, I don't know. It, it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see what they do. I'm, I'm very excited to see what Epic Games does and who, who, who is gonna go to them next because I guarantee you they're gonna start attracting some serious talent to go over to their side of the, uh, the, the aisle, so to speak. And because of their offering all of these these goodies with just, you know, just come hang out. We'll advertise for you. You're going to be good to go and just, you know, put your game onto the Epic game store. I don't know if it's going to be a first thing, probably not because they want to make money. So it's going to be everywhere, but it's, it's going to, it's, it's going to be good for gaming. Let me just say that. But, you know, I want to move on to a smaller topic. This one came in late yesterday. I think that, you know, some of the, uh, some, some people may appreciate this in the chat. Some people are probably don't even know about this in the chat. So let me, let me pull up the, uh, the, the banner uh, that I just put in here. Yesterday, uh, they had a, a Nintendo Direct Mini. Now, normally on these programs, we don't talk about Nintendo. And it's not because we don't love Nintendo. Quite frankly, I have 30 games for my Switch. I love it. Um, but I wanted to talk about this particular title. And as you can see, yep, I'm talking about Panzer Dragoon. Now, when I think of Sega Saturn, I'm going to take it way back, folks. I immediately think of Panzer Dragoon, and my God, it brings back so many great memories. Now, it was a, not only a fantastic shooter, new IP for Sega, launch title for the Saturn, and in that launch title lineup for the Sega Saturn, way back in, I believe it was 1995, it included Virtual Fighter, Daytona USA, Clockwork Knights, and of course, Panzer Dragon, or Dragoon. Um, I played all of these titles day and night, and still, some of these games are my all-time favorites, but nothing compares to Panzer Dragoon, because if you are an old-school cat like me who grew up with uh, the, the Japanese shooter genre, that was one of my favorites. I loved it. Radiant Silvergun, still one of my favorites, and I'm just so mad that we cannot get that on modern consoles, at least I I, I I don't know if, I don't know if it was ever released. The second part was not not the first part, um, but yeah. Uh, yesterday after the uh, Nintendo Direct Mini, um, they dropped this on to, of course, the Nintendo eShop. Uh, it is a remake of the original Panzer Dragoon. It's twenty five bucks. And Jay, I'm gonna bring this back around to you because you are our classics. Game master. Oh my! Oh so, my! That, we got some challenge here. <laughs> <laughs> because obviously you have retro renegades on your YouTube channel, which of course you play old games, and now you have the potential to play Panzer Dragoon remade in glorious graphics. And I got to be honest with you, I'm up to the third chapter, and I am loving it. When you heard about this, is this something that you're going to run out and buy immediately? And what, what is what is your your affiliation or affection, if you will, to both Sega and Panzer Dragoon? Oh God, I, I, if I had a nickname, it would be Sega Boy. I swear, <laughs> yeah, I because love it. I I totally like. But here here's the thing that I'm a little ashamed of. I didn't own a Saturn, and you know why I didn't own a Saturn? Because I got into PC gaming at that time. Oh, okay. So I was I went from, of course, the Sega Genesis, and I I did the 32X and and the CD and stuff like that. But then I instead of me jumping uh, into like the PlayStation and stuff like that, I got into PC. So I was playing PC games then. And then by the time the Sega Saturn came out, I was fully encompassed into PC games. But then I did end up getting a Dreamcast because at that point in in gaming. The Dreamcast's graphics actually surpassed PC gaming back then. Wow! And that's why I jumped onto that. You know, I mean, you just go look at the launch titles for um for Dreamcast, like uh, uh, Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur looks better than the arcade version on the Dreamcast. It did. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, and some of those games just blew me away. Um, so when it comes to Panzer Dragoon, I have only played it on emulators, unfortunately. Um. 
and the Sega Saturn emulator is actually kind of buggy, so you don't really get to get the full version of that. But there were an, there was another version of Panzer Dragoon for another system. I can't remember which one it was that I have played. Um, and not to say that I don't enjoy that the on rails type games because I do because I'm an old guy and, and I'm used to that kind of stuff. But when I did hear about this, um, first thing I thought was you know this is this will be perfect for Retro Renegades, because basically what we do on Retro Renegades is we play old games, we, we shoot the shit like we're a bunch of teenagers at the arcade. Um, <laughs> it's, it's the type of game that lends itself very easily to a podcast because it's basically just flying around, shooting shit, and then listening to people talking. Um, but when I, I did hear about this coming out for Switch, I have not purchased it yet, um, but I'm definitely going to be buying it, and it might actually show up on Retro Renegades in the next couple weeks so keep your eyes out on tuesday nights yeah they are making the sequel uh for this as well if you if 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 anyone's interested they are making the sequel and it's the same company and i can't wait to see how they do this i'm very excited they're bringing back uh remasters of house of the dead one and two which i house of the dead two was was, was phenomenal for it was you know what mrs boomstick not bad with a light gun. I got to be honest with you. Pretty much an unbelievable dead eye. She loved that. So when I told her that it was obviously coming out, she's like, okay, where's the gun? I'm getting ready. So okay, do you, guys, do you guys want to hear <laughs> something pretty in. incredible? Something incredible that's going to be happening probably in the next uh, couple months on Retro Renegades is because uh, I have del- delved into VR. Mm-hmm. So I have the uh, Oculus Quest and I can plug it into my PC and play Steam games on it as well. Um, there is a, um, a free uh, emulator called MUVR, which basically puts you in your uh, childhood bedroom with all of your video games on televisions, and you can basically just plug in a cartridge and start playing them. That's um, dope. One of, one of the items that they, they've included was Sega Dreamcast with Light Gun. So you can play House of the Dead in virtual reality wow. through this uh, MUVR. So look forward to that, too. But yeah, oh, that's cool. What, yeah, House of the Dead 2, I probably played that game a thousand times. Because, yeah, I mean, I assume. You know, <laughs> yeah, you just go yeah, through yeah. and you kill everything and you get to the end. But it was like, yeah, yeah, I only had like two or three light gun games at the time, and I must have <laughs> played that game daily. Phenomenal game. Yeah, no, I uh, listen. I, me and Mrs. Boomstick played that game like it was. It was like it was the only thing in the in, in there. It, it's it was so so much fun. Real quick, you know, I, I want to bring Gaming Forte into because I told him yesterday, and he's like. What? What do you mean it's out? I'm running to buy it. And he did buy it, but before I get to you, let me catch up some of these super chats. First of all, my very good friend, Scrub Nurse, drops a $5 super chat and says this. Shout out to the old bastards and young guns. Thank, uh, Thanks, Boom, for keeping the shows for us at home and still working. Everyone stay safe. Yeah, I love doing this. You got to understand, folks. Listen, as, as, as you know, you heard me come out and say I wanted to do more shows to kind of ease people's anxieties, right? Kind of just you know, uh, take their minds off it. Folks, you got to understand something. As honorable as I like to believe that is, this is therapeutic for me as well, right? Like, I, obviously, I'm retired. My wife is still working. I'm, you know, she's she's working with people. You know what I'm saying? She's handing meals out. And in, 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 in the day home, you know, the, the, the you know, the, it's kind of like a y, YMCA for seniors, right? They come there, they play pool, they dance, they exercise, they go home, right? And she's still working with the people. So I got to be honest with you. I'm, uh, you know, I'm nervous for her because, you know, they don't give her the proper equipment, you know, and I mean, obviously, it, but, you know, she's she's been safe so far. So, you know, it I have the same anxieties as you do. So the writing these shows and producing these shows is also kind of, you know, therapeutic for me. But real quick, let me, uh, Spider-Man drops a $5 super chat and says this, and this is frustrating. He says, this is getting ridiculous. YouTube won't let me play your last video. I have no idea why. Wanting to show my support, but YouTube slash Google won't let me show the love. Dude, I don't even know what's going on. I, I, I've complained publicly. They've DM'd me. They gave me the toe the line bullshit. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that they're, you know, because right now, the, uh, unfortunately, with these shows and, and a lot of live shows, not just mine, it's, it's a, yeah, lot, a lot of yeah. a lot of uh, smaller YouTubers. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have this on good authority, but I'm going to make a statement right now. It seems as if they are catering to, of course, the bigger channels. 
And the reason why they're catering to the bigger channels that have, you know, 50, 60, 70, 1 million subs, 2 million subs, 10 million subs is because the revenue is coming in much broader there and they're getting their 30 percent and uh, little, little guys like me and, and salty and a few other like you big cloud yourself i don't i hopefully you know yeah. uh, you know things work out that they put your stuff out there the iron lords good friends of mine um it's 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 frustrating it, it's very frustrating but you know what let's let's continue with the show i want to thank everybody so far for the super chats it's, it is greatly truly appreciated but gaming forte you bought the game i told you about it what is your uh, love of the Panzer Dragoon series, and did it did it meet or beat your expectations for a remake? Oh, so <clears throat> so full transparent. I haven't even I haven't booted it up yet. I, okay. when, you, when you told me about it, I instantly went into. I said, "Let me see exactly how much credit I got on here." <laughs> and I, and I was like, oh, I'm only gonna pay six dollars. I'm definitely buying this. So I definitely did purchase it. I am looking forward to playing. But shoot, when I saw it, when I finally did do it last night, it was late. I was like, I got a show in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to bed. So um, the biggest thing that I'm super excited for is I like. I'm just like Jay. I like those on rail type games, and that's the type of things that you know. Especially on a switch, you could just sit back and just enjoy without having to like put a lot of thought into the game. That's one thing that I appreciate the most about it. But the biggest thing I think overall that I am looking forward to the most is just going back into that world. Like I haven't played it since the original Xbox, and this it's been a long time since then. Um, I remember playing the original version on Sega, and that was something that um even then was very remarkable in the way that they actually crafted that game. So I'm looking forward to um, jumping into this and seeing it. But for more than anything, um, my daughter is always looking at my Switch because um, I didn't install it on theirs. I did it on mine. And um, she's always looking at my games like, hey, what's this game? What's that game? And it's it's going to be real cool to be able to like show her games that I played when I was younger. That's yes. I try to always download those games that made me love gaming to like get them into gaming even more than they are now um, because there's a lot of games that they can actually play but for them to like kind of bridge that connection with you as a parent and just to see the things that you love they could possibly love too i'm looking forward to the first time she looks on her says hey dad what's this game or hey what's this game? <laughs> and um they start playing it and 90 percent of the time any game that i have on my switch they at least um play it to play lip service to it but i think she's gonna like this because she's a huge dragon fan oh she okay loves like she loves like science fiction and um, stuff like that so i think she's gonna really like just dig that just the fact that you just right she's gonna probably call it a big dinosaur that flies that's pretty much what she's gonna say <laughs> i love so, it <laughs> so so that's what i'm kind of looking forward to i like her imagination and i'm looking really just just in just seeing the games that i love to play to see what kind of sticks with her uh my 15 year old she's all over the place she plays mortal Kombat. if you guys look at my friend if, if you're on the friends list you see somebody playing mortal Kombat. it ain't me it's my daughter <laughs> It's my daughter. She plays it every day, and um, when the new Spawn trailer came out, she was super excited because I've never seen Spawn represented in a video game. Is oh, dude, it's it's so good. Time. Yeah, me and Big Cloud talked about that the last time. Yeah, I've never seen him represented in a game as good as he's represented in Mortal Kombat. It's pretty, pretty incredible, but. That's what I think about Panzer. I definitely am going to be playing it as soon as um, probably right after this show just to give it a go. Um, but yeah, boom. Thanks for telling me about that because I literally went in there 20 minutes where I talked to you and purchased it right then and there. Yeah, this this was uh, stealth dropped, uh, obviously, after the mini. Uh, and uh, like I said, I, I think more people need to know about it. that's kind of again. That's why I wanted yeah. to make a little bit of a small topic for today. You know, uh, Big Cloud, let me, let me grab your ear on this. Obviously, you know, the original Panzer Dragoon came out in 1995 as a Sega Saturn launch game. And the remake features updated graphics and controls and looks and plays better than ever. I'll tell you that right now. I'm up to the third chapter, and it's spot on. The controls are fantastic, even when you're looking around. Because, you know, with this particular shooter, there's a 360-degree 
um, uh, you know, view span. So there's sometimes enemies behind you, you got to switch the view and it works with the triggers. No problem. It works very well. And obviously we are, like I said earlier, they are working on Panzer Dragoon, Dragon, uh, Dragoon 2 Zwi, and we are getting House of the Dead 1 and 2. Uh, this company obviously has the chops to bring, uh, you know, to bring something old and give it that new, uh, you know, that new shine. And they did a great job. Do you have a Switch? And would you be interested in actually playing a game from 1985, uh, 1995? Yeah, me and Forte go at it over this all the time. I got to get a Switch. I will be getting that very, very soon. But um, like we talk all the time, uh, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. It is. The fact yes. that the game is being remastered and remade for the newer gen is great. The same thing can be said about what happened with uh, the Resident Evil franchise as of late. You know, the remake. Yes. Our well favorite we, thing to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, received. And again, this this feels or this always uh, goes into what we've always been talking about for like, uh, you know, Dino Christ, stuff like that. You know, games like that will be great for the newer gen or newer, um, newer audiences. So it's it's cool. It's really, really cool. I, I think um, it's a good thing, and I think the game will do great for them. And this just goes to show Nintendo just uh, on their... They on are their, on their A game, man. Right. Yes. Even with them launching the Switch um, Lite, right? There's also reports of another one they're going to supposedly make, which you're is... Gonna a- about, are you going to talk about... Are you going to talk about that on your show today? A Switch Pro? Yes. I, I talked about it before. Um, it just, you know, we're waiting for a confirmation on when it's going to happen. What the code name was that came out that was leaked? So yeah, we have, like, so, um, it's a weird, it's a weird it. name. Yeah, it's patents for it going around talking about like a beefier dock and stuff like that. And that'd be I, cool for them. I, I don't do. know if they're gonna do it this year. It kind of wouldn't be wise, obviously, to do it this year because of the switch light and how well it's done. But best believe Nintendo will d- uh, dip and dab into that because it's kind of it's kind of like how they always go about their handhelds. They are just um, smart, dude. Yeah, yeah they, they branch them out. Like, remember, it was 3DS, then he went to 3DS Lite, then 2DS, then, you know, they'll they'll always do this and, and branch them out. So I can see them doing it eventually, just probably not this year. Maybe they'll do it next year to combat the PS5 and Series X, you know, maybe. Just I to, like to, you know what would be a good month, a month for them? Almost like, a, I think it would be the third or fourth year anniversary. Launch it in March. Absolutely, yeah, that'd be perfect for them. You know, March right now, 2021 like, is like, perfect. You know? Yeah, they're they're like a fifty million over fifty they're million. Dude, oh. they are. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this: even when the new one launches, they're still gonna sell the old yeah. one. Exactly. Nintendo is an anomaly. They're a conundrum. You know, they're an enigma. They just know yeah. how to do it. And whatever secret sauce that they pack into every cartridge that a kid puts in their mouth makes them a Nintendo fan for life. Because I'm one of them. <laughs> exactly. Back on that uh, nostalgia. Yeah, show, man, I'm just waiting for this uh, House of the Dead too. Let me tell you, oh. I'm waiting for it because uh, <laughs> I got to see the uh, crazy anomaly, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know what? You know, let, let me bring Noof in here. Close out no. this particular topic. Now, Noof, obviously, you yourself have had to switch to switch several times. And uh, you, you, you know, you like, you like the classics, but you love the classics when they're done with respect yes. and admiration for the IP. And I am telling you, this game is a love letter to not only Sega fans; it is a love letter of admiration and respect for anyone that loves Panzer Dragoon. And I am giving it the big, the boomstick seal of approval. At twenty five bucks, it is well worth your money. Do you still have a switch? Because I don't know, actually. I, I do because I traded my PS4 for another switch. Well, yes, Diffonomics one hundred and one, baby. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I mean, but so so is this something that would be in your wheelhouse? I would say definitely yes. Um, be- and I got to be honest, I'm going to pull out a fraud card here. You know what? I, weirdly enough, Sega Saturn was my console of choice back when that launched versus the PlayStation. I was always a Sega kid, so I went gravitated to Sega naturally, right? Panzer Dragoon was one of the launch titles. I remember it quite vividly. I remember all those fantastic commercials. The game looked pretty cool, but I don't know mm-hmm. what it was. I just never gravitated to it at the time. I ended up buying other games, you know, like I had uh, I had so many ones like Bug and Clockwork Knight and oh Daytona, God, Daytona Bug. USA, Daytona, you know, Virtua Fighter, all those games, a lot, especially the arcade stuff, right? Because I was really into that kind of stuff at the time. And that game just kind of looted. Basically, it's the modern day space here with, with a dragon instead, yeah, basically. If you, yeah. basically, if you look at it, right? I'm sure a lot of you might have fond memories of the space hero games, very popular in the arcades at least. Uh, but yeah, but this coming out on the Switch, first of all, I'm 
amazing that it was like surprise launch came out of nowhere just said oh panzer dragoon and it's a remake like a, a remaster with upgraded graphics except better controls all this stuff so i'm totally i totally want to go back and try this game now just because i mean at, at limited i think it's limited run games is doing it as well first yes. of all i'm wondering if they have a courage because you know me guys i I prefer to get physical, but I don't think there will be. But I don't know if I can. Get a I'm gonna say this. Well. I'll tell you this, Noof. If yeah. there is one, I will buy it as a, a, and just to have it, uh, you know, and not open it because. Listen, I'm, I'm a supporter. I'm mm -hmm. telling you right now, if you have uh, Panzer, and people are going to be, people are asking already, are they going to do the R, uh, the Panzer Dragoon RPG? No mm -hmm. word on that yet. But man, right. if they do, sign me up. Yeah, I mean, totally. And, you know, and to put it out on the Switch makes a lot of sense because if there's one console right now that is doing extremely well in the old Sega territory, that would be the Switch. Switch is having a phenomenal run right now in China, Japan, those areas. Uh, I mean, they're they're even trumping PlayStation. Like, it's it's just amazing. The Switch has got such a uh, foothold going on right now. Maybe, and you know, and then it's doing quite well in North America, too. But the Switch, is, like I said, has become a huge success for Nintendo, a huge anomaly. And it makes sense to put it on there because, like I said, if you're if Dra Panzer Dragoon is a game that, again, a lot, not a lot of fans would know what the hell we're even talking about here. Yep. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of Sega aficionados, especially in the land of the rising sun, who know that name. You know, and uh, obviously this is not done by Sega or at least published, you know, they're affiliated with the game, I'm sure. But um, but it is good to see them do it. And you know what? I, I hope they continue this trend because that's the thing. There's such a fantastic backlog of amazing games from that era, from the uh, Sega Saturn, uh, you know, the, the PlayStation, even the N64, for example, that basically – were great games, great stories, great concepts, but because of the technology, they were very limited back in the day, you know, because the 3D, the 3D uh, cameras were a huge problem for developers back in those days. Uh, Panzer Dragon wasn't so bad because, again, it was kind of a sort of a semi on, on rails kind of a game, right, where the camera wasn't constantly shifting, you, you know, it was kind of straightforward, but uh, a lot of games that did have complex camera controls didn't, didn't fare so well. So like to bring some of those back now would be amazing. And I totally encourage developers to go back and look at those catalogs yes. and do the same thing. Just don't bring them back. You know, oh, here's a, here's the old game. We're just bringing it back like a rehash. No, like bring it back, put a new no, coat this of is, paint this on is it. Done. Yeah. Noof, you're going to really be impressed. I mean, it does not look cheap. I mean, listen, I'm not going to tell you something. It looks like doom eternal, but I'm telling you yeah. for, for what it is, for the price that they're charging and what it looked like to what it looks like now, man, they did an amazing job on this remake. Yeah, totally. But I'll leave it at that. I think it's awesome. I'm hoping to pick it up here at some point. Yeah, twenty five uh, bucks. Uh, not bad. I, sorry, I, I wanted to jump in here for one second before sure, you end the topic. Um, you know, for, for all of us nostalgic fans that are out there, um, <laughs> if this game does really well, imagine if they went way back into the catalog and re-released a remake of Alyssa Dragoon that was mm. once released on the Sega Genesis. Oh, wow, dude. Where you're an actual, uh, you know, you're a protagonist, female in this game, I believe, and you have dragon, um, you know, companions that help you fight. Oh, wait a second, that was scale band. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> boo! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, you bring that up? Hey, well, well we're sure just not a retro topic. Not to get off, I'll make this really quick. Has anybody seen the fantastic collector's edition of Streets of Rage 4 by Limited Run? Where it basically, nice. you, you can get it for the Nintendo Switch. And you basically, uh, it comes with, uh, it comes, I think, with the cartridge. And then, but but it also gives you the Sega Genesis clamshell case with a, oh, uh, with a, uh, what do you call it? The inside insert that you can flip backwards. So you can either have it say Streets of Rage or Bare Knuckles 4. Uh, which is what it was cool. called in Japan. And it comes with a bunch of other stuff, too, that is so fantastic. It's like, I want that Switch limited edition because it's it's crazy. Just just look it up. It is it's fantastic. Like, I, I don't want to get it on Game Pass or whatever. I want to get that physical copy because uh, it looks it looks dope. Do we have a release date yet for Streets of Rage 4? No, not that I'm aware of, dude. I, I actually just looked it up right now. I, wait, wait, Noof, where did you see that collector's edition? I saw it on, uh, it was an ad on my Instagram from Limited Run Games. Oh, so you probably got to buy it from them. And, okay. and they don't, and the funny thing was they had an advertise. well, it was, looks like the re it comes in a case for the PlayStation, but for the Switch, it looks like you get the whole package. Wow. 
I think if you look up limited run games, it should be on their website. Yeah, I'm actually I'm I'm actually gonna head over there. But you know what? You know, real quick, let let's let's move on to the next one. And you know, I'm gonna bring uh, BitCloud into this uh, immediately. Uh, look, here's the thing. I, I don't want to harp on this, but I thought it was worth talking about because it's it's a trend that is going to continue in gaming, and there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be unhappy with this. And and I have to tell you right now, if you're one of these folks, I'm not gonna insult you. You're entitled to your opinion, but I'm gonna have to say, as an adult man, stop it. All right, so let's get into it. We have heard uh, through the rumor, uh, uh, well, it's not even a rumor. It's, 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 all, it's all but confirmed. And in what many in the industry, and of course, I think BitCloud Gaming will, will, will back me up on this, uh, we saw coming for a very long time. Sony is looking to expand where games could be played. More importantly, their first party games. Uh, and now we've seen the uh, this, uh, you know, I guess migration to the, uh, you know, destination PC with uh, w- with some of them so far. You know, we, Horizon Zero Dawn has been confirmed. And you know what? The more people that get to play um, that game, I, I cheer it because a lot of people boo that game. And I'm t- to tell you that you are you're wrong. I mean, <laughs> I love that game and maybe it's not your game. I hear you. You got to give credit where credit is due. Guerrilla Games, man, they did an amazing job, and I cannot wait for part two. Uh, we obviously know that Death Stranding is going to PC. Uh, Detroit Become Human is already there. Well, here is where the saltiness is going to start shaking all over this podcast, and I hope not. Uh, that's in gonna a- uh, hopefully not. Uh, in, in, in a story, a bit cloud that has been making the round since Tuesday evening, God of Wars, uh, you know, obviously came out in 2018. Uh, it should have been my game of the year. It was literally edged out. I mean, by a hair, by Assassin's Creed Odyssey because of the size and scope of that game. I just, I loved both of them. But God of War, I put, I, I want to say over 60 hours into that game. Loved every minute of it. And no. That it's one of uh, Sony Santa Monica's finest creations to date. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. But in what's a very interesting uh, aspect of that particular game is that the uh, the only on PlayStation logo or slash label has been officially removed on the official web page, leading many people in the community to suspect that God of War is going to PC. And we've heard um, Corey Barlog say this in the past. People asked him, um, is it coming to PC? He, his response was very simple. I would love to see God of War come to PC, but it is out of his control. And, you know, Sony, as a, as, as a publisher, um, as, you know, as a console maker, is they're, they're looking to do some different things. And I'm going to be honest with you, I do not understand what the big hubbub is about, to be honest. What mic is that? I think I might be loose. Oh, okay. Sorry, what? Um, yeah, it sounded like your mic was moving. Oh, uh, I just had to pick it up off something. Yeah, no, no problem, dude. Uh, um, so, uh, BitCloud, why are people making the, a big deal over this? And is, is, this, is, is this something that, as a Sony fan, it's someone that has... Sony at the forefront of their channel. Is this something that people have to just accept is going to happen? Well, when we talked about the uh, Horizon thing, right? It was just a really people mad because they lost a bragging right type of thing. Yes, yeah, which is stupid, which is and um, yeah, exactly. And a lot of them, again, like I told you, I did research on. It. They didn't even play the damn game. So again, I just <laughs> I thought that was funny. But to go back to this um, again, the way games are being operated. Some people are really overreacting to some of this. Now, granted, I looked into this. I actually did a video on this, and it was actually um, their name's Dark Side of Gaming. They actually did an updated piece on this, and they actually reached out to me after I did my video because I tagged them. And they did an update piece on this, and they stated that, uh, no, uh, this doesn't confirm that Sony's doing this. And they made some good points, and basically one of their biggest things they mentioned out, well, one of the biggest things they pointed out was the fact that this game never really had the all the only on PlayStation logo on the um, store. It was only on one particular one that it had this on, and it still does, and they're still holding it on there. So again, if it does happen, though, like I said in my video, it happens. It's not a big deal at this point. It really isn't. Some people are saying it's a bad look because PS5 is about to launch. It really is not. The reason why I say it's not 
just look at what's uh look just look at the games that's already being like supposedly like rumored that's going to be for the system day one supposedly like mm. spider-man 2 is supposedly going to be there horizon zero dawn 2 you know what i'm saying mm. ain't nobody going to be talking about horizon zero dawn 1 or god of war when exactly PS5 launches and that's the the big issue that i see a lot of people doing they're like going oh these old games are kind of overshadowing how they feel going into the new one it's like nah it's not out when it's you put out an older title big cloud especially on a platform it's never been on pc for instance the potential to put it out at a fair price right mm -hmm. you know i i'm not expecting a 60 dollars release i'm probably expecting like a 30 buck 30 dollar release if you sell a million copies of this game on pc that's 30 million dollars i'm no mathematician but more so than the money that Sega, uh, Sega, that Sony could make and reinvest in their first parties, potentially uh, buy a new, an, another, uh, you know, studio, create another studio. You are creating new fans of the older IP, and you, right. uh, well, I don't know, you have a new console coming out, so these games. Are All right, this is a good way to get more eyes absolutely. on the table. In a weird way, and the thing is, too, uh, Sean Layden said this before he left. He said yes, that he uh, with uh, some select titles would go there to get more eyes on them, to quote unquote, to build them as a bigger franchise, you know, yep. for them. And again, um, <clears throat> when you look at it and the way things are going, again, I just I don't understand why people kind of overreacted to this because nothing was like Sony didn't come out and just fly out confirm that it was happening. But again, like I said in my video, if it does happen, it does happen. What I really is going, what I really think is going to happen, I think more than likely we're not going to hear anything about this until we get like the sales numbers of Horizon Zero Dawn on PC. Yeah, that sure, I can see that happening. Really, really good, then. Obviously, it's there. You know, it's there for sure. Well, obviously. I mean, obviously, when you when you th again when you when you think about uh, this generation uh, for Sony, uh, the first party comes to mind, at least for me, uh, and the, and and two particular very very large and very well detailed and and very well received titles are both God of War and of course Horizon Zero Dawn. They they sold extremely well. Selling them on another on a, another not, not another console, not going to Xbox. It's going to PC. Stop it already. You know what I'm saying? Building a, a building out your fan base could potentially bring in like like for instance, my my point of view. And Noof, I kind of want to bring you back in here because obviously you sold your PlayStation Four, and you know obviously you got a Switch. So you know it's it's just the way that you do business. When you take an older game. And you put it out there on another platform, i.e., PC, right? Mm -hmm. And that and that and that happens. You know, we know that this summer, this summer, we're getting Horizon Zero Dawn on PC. And I say we. I, I don't have a. I'm not right. part of the PC Master Race. We know that uh, from what we understand that it's unlikely Horizon Zero Dawn two, to my sadness, is not going to yeah. be a launch title. I'm okay with that. But let's say, for instance, that it comes out in March of 2021. That same person that played the first one on their PC may now be like, damn, they're not doing day and date like Microsoft. So I may actually have to go out and buy a PC. Guess what? Who won? Sony yeah. wins because you bought a freaking PS5 to play Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Do you agree with this strategy? And also, you know, coming from a like a, a, a man's point of view, an adult man's opinion. People need to kind of really just chill. People breaking their desks oh. and throwing their TVs out windows because of the, the console, the console war is lost. What are your thoughts on them possibly bringing God of War to the PC? But more importantly, what are your thoughts on people losing their shit over this? Well, first off, just let me state for any fans in the chat or whatever, I do not hate PlayStation just because I've traded it. Heck, I've no, traded my PlayStation several situation. times. I've traded my Switch several times. It's it's nothing personal. It's just the way I do business. Like I said, New Phenomics 101. However, <laughs> I do not trade my Xbox because I always know, and it's always true when it comes to Xbox, I always regret it. So I don't get rid of my Xbox. They stay. Uh, but uh, back to your question at hand. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty foolish. It's just the way the industry is going. We're not living in the '80s and '90s anymore. This is not just a console era. You know what I mean? Uh, back in the day, you know, you had your consoles, you had your arcade, and then there was a small group of the PC gamers. But like I said, the the economics have changed. 
Uh, and that's the biggest thing. The economics have changed. The way we consume games has changed a lot. I mean, uh, now with games taking, you know, four or five years to, to make, also mm -hmm. with the massive budgets that they have, these companies want to recoup their costs as much as they can. And it only makes sense to get their games in as many places as they can. If you're still in the console business, I get it. You still need a reason for people to buy your console. So you still have to have some amount of incentives or exclusivity to drive people over there. And, you know, that that's the thing. And this is the difference between Microsoft and Sony. And this is why I'll, I'll give Sony some props here because when Microsoft started doing the day and date, I know why they did it. They did it to drive Game Pass sales because nothing is a bigger incentive to go and get Game Pass than a brand new game that would cost you 80 bucks and it's there the very moment it launches. And I yeah. get it. It's a huge selling feature. But for PlayStation, and, and, and I think an Xbox should have done the same. Like what you do is at least have a window. Like, okay, it's coming to Game Pass, but give it six months even, right? Because that way, if you're trying to sell the physical copies, or you're trying to invest somebody to at least buy a console, uh, you know, if you're not sold on the game, you're going to wait for it anyway. It's what I've said the other day, and I'm going to stick to this. If you really want a game, if the game is really your cup of tea, you're buying that game day one. You're not waiting for it. If you're going, eh, I'll wait for it, you weren't really interested in it to begin with. I'm sorry. That's that's a fact. Because let me tell you, if you want a Gears 5, you went out and bought that shit. Like if Game Pass didn't exist, how many people would have that day one? Lots of people, right? Everybody had it day one because it was on Game Pass. But I'm just saying, if they put a launch window in, as far as their games coming to PC, I think it's only good. It expands the user base. It allows them to make a little bit more money on these games that might be starting to dwindle in sales. Uh, and that's a good thing because if you drum up, the thing is you're not talking about the old customers either. You're also trying to reach brand new customers. Do you know what I mean? And there's some people that'll never own a console. Just like we, some of us don't want to play on PC. There's lots of gamers out there who will never own a console. They want to play on PC. That's their ecosystem. So to be able to play the biggest and best games uh from from all of these companies you know it is pretty cool because just think about that you know uh it kind of in a sense for pc players it makes the whole console war aspect kind of irrelevant because for most of them now they're able to play gears on pc they can play horizon zero dawn uh they'll be able to play halo so essentially <laughs> you're almost playing the best of everything in one spot right and if you got a great pc you'll also be able to play it you know, at, at higher resolutions, better frame rates, et cetera, et cetera. Like I said, that's not my ecosystem. I don't care for PC. I think it's great, but I don't have the money and the resources to keep up with it. But what they're doing is fantastic. Uh, bringing these games over is a good thing. PlayStation fans shouldn't be worried in the least bit, simply because, look, if you want to play a PlayStation game, you go out and buy it day one, you've played it. Like most people that are Horizon Zero Dawn fans or God of War fans, they've already played that game, they've beaten it, they've moved on to the next one, so on and so forth. So you're, you're just going to go out and buy it, you, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, I think it's a good. I think it's a good thing. The more games they bring out, and if and certainly God of War is a very high profile title, so um, yeah, if they bring it over there, good for them. Like I said, Sony Sony needs to get with the times, or they're going to find themselves looking in the rearview mirror because uh, the other companies are moving on, and now with the competition ramping up from Stadia and everybody else that looks to get in the games field, uh, you can't be narrow minded as to think uh, all of our games have got to be sold on one box because there's no there's no set guarantee that everybody's going to jump out and buy. Uh, the next generation of console and stuff like that. So. You know, the, 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 what people seem to forget is that these consoles are expensive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, uh, especially when, when when you talk about Sony and we and, and BitCloud obviously has and I, and I have talked about this. Their their player base at least eighty plus percent. We we can go into specifics where some someone may say eighty seven. I'll I'll say it's probably around eighty three percent are casual. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I like I like to give the the you know the the edge to the hardcore because I'm a part of that. Oh, yeah, um, we're we're in the minority. The hardcore are the minority. That is a great point. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, the hardcore ones are the one who do the shows like us or uh, look into this stuff a little bit more, like every single detail for a game. That's the hardcore who does stuff like that. The casual just looks for the value. At the end of the day, they look for the yes. best value and they look for the deal. And um, that's why that's part of why PlayStation 4 just dominated this generation. They're just there's no denying there were just games upon games you can really just deny, you know, you had so much to choose from. And that was uh, Xbox's uh, undoing, unfortunately, for the start, you know, for the most of this gen. And so I'm hoping for Series X to change that, you know, well, fingers 
across, but we'll see. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, real quick, let me let me bring in um uh let me bring in uh Jay, uh grab for God for this. You know, when you talk about games coming to the PC, you obviously yourself, you have a, a big enough PC to run it. So it, obviously, if you've never played Horizon Zero Dawn or God of War or any of the other potential AAA bangers that Sony has to play, you would probably buy them because, well, you can play them. You can, you, you're you going to run them at that best graphic fidelity, and they're probably going to be a heck of a lot cheaper. They're probably going to be 30 bucks. They're going to be, you know, that power price. And it, you know, it's a win-win for everyone. It's a win for Sony. It's a win for the fan. It's a win for people who are into graphics who could who can push these 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 um these ports to the max specs possible. But you know that's not even the, that's not even the real question here. The question is why do people continue to lose their minds over the fact that other gamers are going to have a chance to play something that they might have missed not owning a PlayStation Four? Petty fanboys. Yeah, that's those are the only two words I can think of when you when you even uh, put that question on me. It's petty fanboys. It's people who can't stand the thought that their their preferred console is not dominant, and they think dominance means you can only play it here. That's that's the whole thing about it. Um, I've been I've been playing PC games since the nineties. Now I've not owned. A PlayStation. The only PlayStation I own is the PlayStation uh, Classic, the Mini, and I and I got that um, on sale yes. on Amazon, so I can play classic games. Yes, for that real re- for that reason, of course. And plus, you can add emulators to it, and you can play old old games, and that's why I got it. Um, not, not nothing against Sony at all. Um, the main reason why I never owned one was because of the controllers. I could never use the controllers, and I've tried multiple times because a lot of people don't know I play games with one hand, and I just found the Sony controllers with the thumbstick positions very hard to play. So as an Xbox guy and a PC guy, I am so looking forward to playing some of these amazing games on PC. Um, a lot of people will will say that you know the reason people buy consoles is because of exclusives. Um, I have different uh, ways I look at that. Um, you know, like I buy consoles because of convenience, um, because of ecosystem, uh, for, for a lot of different things. Um, exclusives, it's kind of a secondary thing to me. Um, so I think a lot of people kind of push that. Um, another thing that I wanted to bring up was that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of talk about the reason why Um, Sony sells so many consoles because of their exclusives and then Xbox is is not pushing exclusives. They're pushing game pass. Well, there's two, there's also like two ways to look at that. You can either a buy a Sony console because it has X, Y, and Z games, or you can buy an Xbox console or PC because it's got game pass, which has all the games. Yes. So, so, which you know, is key. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you kind of have to, I don't know if that's a really valid argument to say that, you know, the reason why people buy games is, is because of exclusives. If, if exclusives are coming out for everything, then that's just better for gamers. You know, we're gamers here. We shouldn't be fanboys. We shouldn't be flying flags for any particular console and bashing everything else. We should all just be gamers and want to play games and have fun. And wasn't that the point while we all went to the arcades back in the 80s? We went to hang out with our friends and have fun, play games, be entertained. And it's gotten to the point now where it's just gotten ridiculous. Like, I don't, I don't even want to turn on Twitter half the time because I don't want to have to look at the ridiculousness and the, the amount the of silliness of it all. Uh, what you summed it up to Jay is because of the social media times. I mean, even back when we were kids, it was always Nintendo was better than Sega, uh, Street Fighter's better than Mortal Kombat. So really, you know, really, it, yeah. it never it never fucking <laughs> go it never goes away and it's never gonna go away. Yeah, it's, it's just, different, you, though. you have to filter out what you want to see and what you don't. And like I get fanboys, I to- I totally do, and to some degree I, I consider myself one. I don't think I'm I'm a toxic ass hat, but like I made a point, and I'm not trying to get off topic here, but like, okay, this limited run thing on the Street Fighter, right? 
So I go in and I said, so where, where's the Xbox copy? That's all I asked. One question, where, how come it's not on Xbox? I asked a simple question. Do you fucking think I could get a sensible answer from anybody? No. You know what I got? Xbox is trash. Xbox is this. <laughs> Xbox is that. And I'm just like, I'm like, like oh and, and, and even Xbox's own Facebook page got, it's littered with Sony trolls that constantly go in on their Facebook page and go, Xbox is trash. Xbox got no games. I'm like, like you can't help themselves, and it drives me fucking bonkers. Like, just go play your your your, your god machine. Just go over and play your god machine because it's the be all end all, and shut the fuck up. Like seriously, like it pisses me off. And then there, of course, there's a there's a there's a slew of people in this community. And some of them know what you're talking about. Just can't fucking accept a fact, right? They they constantly like if it's an if Xbox is anything better, no, they gotta find like this whole solid state fucking. Hard drive. When the fuck does a hard drive ever become the be all end all for a console? Never in the history are we talking about hard drives. I get it. You got an amazing hard drive. It's probably double as fast as Xbox. But we're when, talking seconds. It's just, it's just, you know what it talking, is? It's yeah, we're talking about loading yeah. stuff. We're not even talking processing power. Okay. I, I, I'm going to end it there because I'm already getting fired up because I'm thinking about the stupid remarks I've been getting the last three or four days. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Nuke social media destroyed the game. Jesus, That's yes, it's it's, 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 a, it's it's a sad state of affairs. You know, real quick uh, before I get to gaming forte, close out this topic. Let, let me just catch up on some of these awesome and very generous super chats. First of all, Game Genie Prime drops a super sticker, which I've never seen before, and it's dope because it's a hippo with one up. I mean, listen, it it brings me back to my kids' days with hungry, hungry hippo, and of course the one up. So thanks for the two dollars super chat, brother. So, or the super sticker really appreciate the generosity philly eagle a very very good friend of the show but also more importantly extremely generous drops a five dollar super chat and says this if any gamer is upset about games going to multi-plat create your own studio make your own games and then put the way you want <laughs> otherwise just chill i love it dude he's so he's so to the point thank you so much for that um phase 23 bkny who's always here and also very generous, drops a final super chat and says this. Since PS5 is coming this year or early next if delayed, um, Sony will release PS4 exclusives on PC. Makes sense, but PS5 titles, yes, PS5 titles are going to be exclusive for PlayStation 5. That's, that's already confirmed, but bringing some of the older games to maybe create new fans to potentially want to buy a PS5 is ingenious. I don't know why people aren't cheering that on. That is why you can say, well, man, they're really thinking outside the box. Go go Sony. But nope, that's not how it goes. Eagles fan 76, who's also a good friend of the show, drops a $2 super chat. Thank you for being here, but more importantly, for your generosity and says this. I guess I don't have to buy a PS now, uh, buy, buy oh, a, a PlayStation now, the horror. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was being facetious, but you know, Forte. Boom, um, sorry, sorry, boom. I, I, yes. Before you jump, I, I have a feeling you're going to jump on to the next topic. But before you do any of that, I just want to say one thing to everybody who's listening right now. Yes. Is I, I'm, I'm going to put a challenge out to everybody here. Stop, I love challenges. Stop catering to the fanboy channels. Stop. Yes. giving them your views oh. vote with your clicks if you want this gaming community to change if you want social media to change stop catering to them and stop giving them the views stop giving them the attention great if you point, want Jay. this place to be a mm -hmm. great place to to go and and, and talk about our, our passions and to have fun with our friends stop giving them the views because you know what happens when they stop getting attention they will go away yeah, but that's what we need to start doing. We need more channels like Booms who come in here and they talk to everybody and yes, they give you, props to everybody. We have to stop going to these channels that are eccentric to one channel only mm -hmm. and, and bash everything else because the more that we give them attention, the more they will thrive and the more that they'll think that that's what people want. Yeah. Well, that's but then, they, but then good channels like this one then get constantly accused of being echo chambers. Yeah, uh, so, you know what? Okay. Give me I, the I, echo I, chambers, you know, bullshit, right? I, I, I take the challenge. Uh, if anyone, I've been called a neutral. I've been called all kinds of names. The reality is that I support everything, and I proudly do. Uh, you know, real quick, let, let me uh, let me grab a gaming fortesier. Um, obviously, someone that's in the business, 
uh, currently on hiatus for you know the world situation, uh, which is good for you because guess what? You're living the gamer's life. You get yep. a chance to really attack uh, that backlog. But you know, and more importantly, and I think a lot of people for, are forgetting this with the world the way it is right now, and everyone is you know clamoring for safety and health. Look to your effing right and left. Your family is there. Spend some time with your family. You know, I mean, I get, I understand that everyone doesn't get along. Not everyone is like me and Mrs. Boomstick. We're best friends first before even husband and wife. I, 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 I cannot think of a minute in the day without her. Now, everyone is not like that. But right now, but the, you know, take the time to enjoy, you know, your family. But if you were a gamer, this is the gamer's life right now. Just enjoy what has been given to us. It's a bad situation. Make it work. Play games. Attack that backlog. Regardless of what flag you fly, just play some freaking games, and it's going to be great. But Forte, being that you are in the business and you obviously see the sales uh, you know, a flux from PlayStation to Nintendo to Xbox, for you personally, who is a part of of the PC master race that we always hear Enrique <laughs> talking about. And of course now slow-mo flying his PC master race flag all over the place. Um, do you think it is a good thing that Sony is kind of thinking outside the box and bringing some of their older titles to the PC with the potential to sell more PS fives if they hook that fan? Oh uh, man, so let let first let's set one part of the record straight. There's only one person on the Brat podcast named Enrique that That's doesn't right. really play on Xbox cuz uh I'm on my Xbox every day. I play I play on it every day and I still jump back and forth between PC and Xbox. So Enrique, I'd give you the challenge to jump on your Xbox and actually play games on it, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's actually going to happen because he he feels like he he's in kind of he kind of put his stick in the, in the in the sand, I think. Right. He put his stick in the sand at this point. But when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to um when it comes to the exclusive thing with PlayStation, look, man, God of War was my game of the year. The game year it came out, mm -hmm. I felt like that game is a masterpiece. It's the main reason I bought a PlayStation in the first place. In 2013, no thought of a of a God of War was even on the map. But guess uh -huh. what? When I bought my PlayStation, it was just because I knew it was going to be a God of War game coming. That's that is yeah. literally the only game I really bought it for, outside of just the other exclusives that came on there. But there, if there was no God of War, I would not have a PlayStation. So hearing that this game could come to PC and like, and like what big cloud eloquently said, you know, it's been kind of debunked in different ways, but we never really know because the same thing can be said about uh, horizon zero dawn. And guess what? That's on PC. So for me, would it be a great thing for this to come to PC? Well, yes, because ultimately even in performance mode, that game runs at what? 1440 P 45 to 50 frames per second. Yeah. To be able to play that game at a ultra 60 frames per second and high Ridiculous. fidelity frame rate on an ultra wide 20, 21 by nine gaming monitor. Mm, I think I'll take that any time of the day, but, um, <laughs> but I understand why some people don't want that to happen. I think it's a miss. Um, it's it's a big mistake to want it to be that way because I think it's nothing wrong with a bunch of people wanting to try different games, especially when it's a game that's been out for uh, two calendar years at this point already. Yes. So, I think Shannon Loftus, I mean, and, and I know Xbox fans kind of dread her a little bit, but I think one thing she said uh, a couple years ago, or actually probably three years ago, is still stated today. When they were talking about how Play Anywhere really wasn't something that saw a lot of crossplay between Xbox and Play Xbox and PC, I still think that's kind of the thing today. I think it's more visible to PC gamers because Microsoft is putting a big, um, a wide scope over it, so it's being it's known more widely than it was before. But I still think when it comes to PC gamers, most people that have a high end PC. 
and are PC gamers, they're not going to go out and buy a PlayStation because they probably don't, not. They don't yeah. have to. Now, if you're on the fringe, like a lot of people that are coming into PC gaming, like you know, like Enrique and everybody who has a system that could kind of be challenged by these next generation consoles, then those are the people that may still jump back to P- back the console because. They never really left it. They still have their console in their house. They're still looking forward to the next system. But those people that they talk about that never played a PlayStation exclusive because they only been on PlayStation because they've been on PC, those people, those PCs like BitCloud and my PC and other people's PC, their PCs are way above what these even these next generation systems are already going to give them. So. Yeah. You're never going to get those people to come over with the exception unless they just blow it out and they just want to play every PlayStation exclusive. And that I does you, happen. Don't you use it like as collateral? Like you, you give the first one, but like the sequels, you use those, you know? Yep, that's exactly. Like, Absolutely. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that, the other first was connected. Yeah, and that's what I really think is the biggest thing. So if you want, and I think your analogy about if you want to sell multiple copies even more, just release it on PC. I always said the reason Final Fantasy VII is going to do amazing is because Square Enix is going to print money off this game just they because sure they're re- just because they're releasing it. <laughs> they're just releasing it, and something like God of War. Um, I think people are going to look at Horizon Zero Dawn and say, well, it really didn't do as great as they say it should have did on PC. Well, Horizon Zero Dawn is a newer IP compared to God of War being something that everybody pretty much knows. I think right. there's a big starch and you know, contrast in development and just how the franchise has matured over the generation and this being a game of the year, um, not even a candidate, a game of the year winner in so many yes. ways. I think this is going to be an opportunity for them to like dive deeper in. And then on top of that, I just think that the biggest thing Sony needs to um, really just realize for themselves is sooner or later, PC is going to become the dominant platform overall. Microsoft is doing everything they can to sit there and say, play wherever you want to play. They're never going to take the actual box out of your house. If you want to play an Xbox, that's fine. But they are 100% focused on letting you play wherever you want to and there's nothing wrong with that there will always be pc gamers there will be there will always be xbox gamers playstation has to come to the realization that sooner or later we have to make a decision on do we want the bigger piece of the pie or are we just happy with the small ecosystem that we garner when it just comes to the console space because there's only one platform that i know for 100 can survive off of just being themselves and that's nintendo because mm-hmm. Nintendo has a allure that no other company has. They have theme parks built after their characters. They have um, kids are born every day. People like Graphic God and everybody else in here that have kids and stuff that love these older games will always re- reminisce on the way that they played their games when they were younger. Some of us never leave that, and they always like to go back and they build it. Like Graphic God built his channel off of retro stuff, and that's from his love of older games and stuff. So when your kids get older, you start bringing those kids up in that echelon, and then their kids going to bring them up. So Nintendo, they're pretty much set because they're grandfathered into the way that we think about what video gaming as a child should be. And then you graduate up into the upper echelon of Xbox and PlayStation and PC Master Race as you get to experiencing those more mature rated games. So PlayStation doesn't have that type of uh, pull as of right now. And I don't think any other platform will because there's only one Nintendo. So get it. So get as much money as you can and the offset of bringing all your games over to uh, PC. And they don't have to be like Xbox day and date. A year, two years later, that's definitely fine because I would love to, I will repurchase Grant God, God of War on PC just to go through that epic campaign again at a ultra realistic setting that no console at this point can ever do. And I think that's that the was, biggest um... thing that they need to do. I love the narratives that switched around as soon as like you know these games do happen. Like I like I like how the narrative switch. Like they'll go to that game was an interactive movie. Then they'll say, "Oh, it looks like a god game now because the PC." You know, I exactly. That. I love that, but you know, honestly, again, um, I, I agree with everything you said as well. It's like you can't beat nostalgia. Nintendo's just nostalgia. They're just killing it. They're, they're, just, they're absolutely just they're killing it. Nostalgia. 
Well, you know yep. what? As we as we move on to the next topic, I have to thank a couple of people here real quick. Of course, Gotham Guy, good friend of the show, got a chance to meet the, Frederick Jackson uh, live and in person at E3 2019. He was kind enough, and I tell the story all the time because I'm always going to be grateful, uh, allowing me to experience uh, um, Fan Fest firsthand as his plus one. And he drops uh, an outstanding and extremely generous $20 super chat and says this. Good morning, Boom. I hope you're having a great Friday. Yes, I certainly am. And you as well, my brother. Sorry I've been off the grid. I've been working at Best Buy doing curbside pickup for the customers. And we are sold out of PS4s, Xbox Ones, and Switch consoles. Yes, gaming is essential. Well, first of all, dude, thank you for what you do. Because obviously you're doing, uh, you know, working with the public, even though you're at arm's length, is still dangerous. Uh, you're out there, you know, uh, working, and uh, we definitely appreciate you being out there because, you know, some people do believe gaming as being super essential. So thank you for that. And, of course, thank you for your generosity. Very good friend of the show, Sir X-Man, drops a $5 super chat and says this. I'm one of those essential employees, so I can't catch up with my backlog. There's too much going on in the world to be fighting over consoles. Just play. Great point, and thank you for whatever it is that you do, my brother. You're out there on the on the front lines. We appreciate that. Let's get into the, the next topic. And, you know, obviously this one is a bit of a bummer at the same time as uh, more, more clarification. When discussing Konami, uh, at least for me, many in the community, in, uh, you know, are very have very fond me memories of, of, of this, you know, I, you know, of this publisher uh, that goes all the way back to the old school days of gaming. Uh, and of course, you know, this is coming, you know, when you talk about Konami, at least again, for me, it is the house that Simon Belmont built, uh, you know, and obviously the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B.A. start for a single player. But you kind of throw select in there if you were playing with your brother like I did. Neo Mental, if you're listening, I remember those days of Contra and they're awesome. And of course, the Konami code lives on. And, you know, the gentleman that created that this year has passed away. I believe it was about a month ago. A, a sad day in gaming. Um, but, you know, w this particular code was made popular with Contra. And now, um, you know, in, in, in what may have, uh, you know, perplexed a lot of people, there were rumors going around last week that Sony was not only creating two new Silent Hill games, uh, it was it was it was factored in. And many, many, many of these sites reported it that they would themselves be working on. Uh, a new Silent Hill game, and even Kojima Productions was brought into the conversation. And I say, I guess you don't keep your ear to the floor of what happened between Kojima and Konami. And because it's a Japanese uh, gentleman and a Japanese company, honor is a big thing. And there is no way in hell that the Konami would have allowed Kojima Productions, regardless of how many zeros they were getting, to work on Silent Hill or Silent Hills. But more importantly, and I think really what we're going to be talking about is the fact that Sony was locked in to buy three of Konami's biggest franchises in Silent Hill, Castlevania, and of course, Metal Gear. Uh, and in fact, some click clickbait sites, uh, well, I will not mention because, you know, we don't want to push traffic over that way, uh, were, were really said are inside sources. Now, here is the thing, okay? I think what's worse is not only did I see it uh, posts and videos and Twitter, you know, replies that the console war was officially over before it started, based on the fact that Sony could potentially own Konami's IP uh, in Contra, uh, Ca Castlevania. I'm not Contra, Castlevania, Silent Hill, and of course Metal Gear coming exclusively to the PS5. There were some in the gaming media actually running this, um, and they were running huge pieces. And I got to be honest with you, I was a little disappointed, to be honest, because, you know, when I usually do these um, these shows, and I do three a week, obviously, you guys know that, I triple and quadruple check everything. Uh, I will not pull anything from Tweak Town. Uh, I will not pull anything from... Um, you know, some, some of the the the, the so-so sites that you kind of, you know, they, we have a rumor and we have it confirmed on good sources. <laughs> and you, you, their, their sources are, are, are 4chan forums. It's not, it's not a good source. Uh. And, and, <laughs> and I know Big Cloud's laughing at that because, you know, he obviously runs a show. Um, but <laughs> what's interesting uh, is that, first of all, Konami has confirmed 
that that's none of this is happening. But I think the heartbreaking part of the story is Konami has said that they have plans for Silent Hill. It's just not happening now. And it's a little disheartening because, quite frankly, the same way Resident Evil saw a resurgence with Seven, then we saw two and a remake of the original, uh, and then we have three coming out next week. We know that if it's done right, if it's done with care, if it's done with respect to the IP, if it's done with precision, if it's done with uh, class and distinction, you could potentially have a Game of the Year title. And to hear the, you know, orig the original thought process that we were getting a new Silent Hill had me super excited the same way I would be excited for an Alan Wake because there are not enough horror games in gaming. Sure, there are horror elements, but no horror, real horror that has you nervous to look around the corner. You get that in Resident Evil, and you always got that in, of course, Silent Hill. So I want to bring BitCloud into this, and obviously we just lost Noof, so he hopefully will be coming back shortly. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> uh, BitCloud, when you when you saw this, when you saw some of these YouTubers or these so-called content creators talking about their inside sources, I know you had to chuckle. Because it's ridiculous. I remember my cheat that I was like, okay. It's funny. It's 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 uh, I mean, listen, these are the same sources that told us that the PS5 was 13.2 teraflops and also it was gonna cost four hundred dollars. And we know that neither of those are true. But for well, the four hundred dollars seems about right now. It might that. be. I I still am I'm still holding for four ninety nine, but we'll see. You know, they, they could surprise me, and I'm not gonna say and say, Well, boom, what would you rather pay? Five or four? I'll take four, please. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Well, so yeah. no problem there, but um, there's two, two questions that are a part of this. One, um, did you believe any of these rumors uh, when they first came out? But more importantly, and I can say again, this the real the real talk of of the talk when it comes to this this particular topic is: Do you yourself want to see a new Silent Hill come out, whether that be an exclusive or a multi plat? Which I think it should just be multi plat. Do you want to see Konami find a, a developer with the chops to do it? And actually, either do it. Them, I don't want them to do it themselves because we know it's not going to be done right. But maybe they could work with someone and get it done. What are your thoughts on that, dude? Well, first, Mr. Slow Mo. Uh, what happened to Mr. Fisher? What was that his last name? What was his name? Fisher, <laughs> the latest <laughs> leaker. <laughs> you know, the face of the earth. Anyway, um, okay. So when I um I did a video on this, um, I basically got the un or not not, not in charge i basically got the um crash bandicoot vibes when i was reading this going okay over and basically you guys remember when crash bandicoot eventually was revealed this gen uh to be remade and uh, redone and whatnot um sony denied it numerous times like they denied it was ever being worked on you yes know? they did mm -hmm. and um, i'm wondering if maybe that's the case with them again this is a big game this is a big big deal it is big it is yeah true or not and so you would want this game to be a surprise for consumers if it is true and the best way to keep it a surprise is to deny that it even exists you know until it's actually yes. legit ready for reveal we got this we went through this for like i would say two straight years for the whole crash bandicoot thing right before we even got the official reveal and so i think that's probably what's going on with this game in general i do think that something is happening because you read the article if you read the context of the article and their actual update they stated that uh even though the you know you know even though the game is not quote unquote happening in the order like in the in the specific manner that is being told about right you know, we don't want to say whatever, you know, like it's, you know, it's not forever like that. So right, of course. I honestly do think they're hinting that, yeah, it's happening. It just probably wasn't exclusive, quote unquote, like that was the big thing that was going around it was exclusive. And again, if it's not exclusive, that's fine. I mean, this is a game that everybody pretty much played every time, you know, everybody. Yes, played. everyone fine. knows, everyone everybody knows probably. Silent Hill. Yeah, everybody loves this. You know, that, that's like me saying, um, you know, uh, Resident Evil 2 or three should have been exclusive you know no no that's fine that's bring those back if you need to launch those on multiple platforms do that that's perfectly fine you know but i honestly do think that, that game is probably still happening it's just uh you know they're keeping the tight lip on it to be honest yeah, well, I mean, listen, if, if it winds up being like a crash bandicoot where they go in and it's not a it's not done in the aspect of, of Resident 2, like what, what, what Capcom has done. I'm still okay with that 
Take yeah. the original, give it that because, quite frankly, the, the, the Crash Bandicoot looks the, that trilogy looks fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. If, yeah. So if you can give me, yeah, imagining, I mean, yeah, yes, if, yes, and they absolutely. can do that with um with these games. So honestly, I I do think uh, you might get something for this. It's just not in the way, <laughs> more likely not in the matter that the quote unquote inside sources put it. <laughs> it's not in that matter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm going to say this, and, and I, I want to be very blunt about this. Okay, I, I am, I, I love having games multi-platform, so it gives me an opportunity as a consumer to say, yeah, you know, I like achievements better. So if Silent Hill remake came out, I would buy it there. But if you're going to sit here and tell me, well, no, I'm sorry, boom, this is a PS5 exclusive. Okay, where do I fucking sign up? Right here, no problem, no questions asked because it's Silent Hill. Who wouldn't want to play it? Now, granted. If you don't have the console, yeah, that's a problem, right? Like, obviously, that's why I appreciate my choice as a consumer to say, okay, we're going to release it on PC. We're going to release it on the Xbox, whatever, and the PS, whatever. At least I can turn around and say, well, you know what? I'm not part of the PC Master Race. I have a Surface Pro 4. It could barely run shit. So let me, I, I have the PS5 and I have the Xbox uh, Series X, but I'd rather play it on the X because I like my achievements better than I like my trophies. But if you're going to tell me that this is where the only way you can play it, well, that's why, I mean, listen, I'm not waiting on Final Fantasy VII. I cannot wait for next, uh, not next week, this uh, following week, which is, my God, so many remakes and so so close <laughs> to each other. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, listen, I, I agree with you. I hope what you're telling me is true. I hope that whatever um, little nuggets of information that you got, you know better than I, because the world needs another Silent Hill, even if it's the original redone in the same vein as something as Crash Bandicoot because we saw how that turned out and it turned out pretty damn good. Now, granted, I I have it. I played it. I don't like the controls the same way I didn't like it in the, the, you know, the first time on the PlayStation, but it was done, I mean, really, really well. So hopefully they could do it in a way where it's classic Silent Hill, but also modern controls. You know what I'm saying? That that's what that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, you know what? For let me let me let me get a uh, get graphic god Gra graphic god. Let me get you in here with this because obviously, you know, you have retro renegades, and when we talk classics, well, Konami is a classic developer, uh, publisher, Probably ever, <laughs> and um, quite frankly, uh, the, the 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 ideology of a new old Silent Hill has me super stoked. Um, for you personally. Are you hoping that what Big Cloud was saying comes to fruition? And are you are you glad or not glad that that the the, the whole they're buying everything, uh, you know, uh, is happening for Sony? Um, so, full transparency, I never played the original Silent Hills because I never owned the old PlayStation consoles. Okay, but the horror games have become something that I've started to enjoy quite a bit ever since. Final, uh, ever since the Resident Evil 7 remake came out. Nice. Loved Resident Evil 7. Finished it. Probably one of the first first-person horror games that I ever went... Like, I, I couldn't put down. Right? Enjoyed that game thoroughly. And really looking forward to the opportunity to play it in VR if it ever comes to PC. Because I heard that it's amazing on VR. Um, that being said, if the new Silent Hill game comes out in its first person, not third person, like Resident Evil 2 and 3, because I have a real issue with the over-the-shoulder gameplay with those two games because I find accuracy with shooting and stuff very difficult, especially when you get zombie, when you're surrounded by zombies trying to shoot them in the head. I can never pinpoint their heads enough. I'm always getting bit. <laughs> first person, I always seem to be a little better at just because of my, my whole um, history in gaming. You know, I've been playing since the original Doom first person and right up till now. Um, but if that game does come out and it is very reminiscent of Resident Evil 7, it'll be a day one buy for me. If it's only on PlayStation, that kind of sucks for me because I probably won't own a PlayStation. Okay. But, but if they confirm that it will go to uh, PC, yeah, I'll be all over that in, in a heartbeat. Well, I mean, listen, it's, 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 you know what? I, I think because 
Konami is in a position where they are going to use their IPs to make the maximum money. I don't necessarily know keeping it onto one platform is going to do that for them. So whoever is going to uh, to do this could potentially. Uh, I mean, listen, I, if it's an exclusive for like, you know, six months or a year, because you remember, that's what that would crash Bandicoot. Like everyone's, oh, it's not coming to Microsoft. And yeah, it was there. Now it's on Switch. It's on my, it's on the Xbox. It's on the PlayStation. Uh, so if the same, if Activision steps up and says, oh, well, you know what, we'll, we'll get involved with this. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll publish this and, and whoever's going to develop it. I, I don't know, but it, it's, I think the world is ready for I, Ready not only for Silent Hill to come back, but I think that this would be great to show Konami that if it sells well, and I would imagine that it would, that they could bring back the original, uh, you know, put it out in the same vein as, of course, Crash Bandicoot was done, that trilogy, and then really do a next gen version. You know what I'm saying? Get, you know, wet people's appetite for the brand because the brand is old. A lot of people don't even know what Silent Hill, they only know Silent Hills. Because of course Kojima was going to do that with you know, and we saw what that game could potentially could have been. It would have been amazing. It would have been really scary. Um, but I, I, I'm interested to see where that goes. Um, you know, gaming forte. Let me let me get you in here with this. You know, Silent Hill is a franchise that a lot of the newer generation uh, doesn't know. And if you look at what Capcom has done to um, bring the younger generation into a brand. And you know, like Resident Evil, the same could be said if Konami does it right. If they do it the right way, and even if they don't go balls to the wall like Capcom did, and like like um, Big Cloud was saying, they could maybe do it in the vein of you know the trilogy for Crash. They could potentially create new fans and then really extend it, making a next generation version. Do you want to see Silent Hill come back? Yeah, I definitely want to see it come back. I mean, I think a lot of people's overall uh, thought process around remakes and remasters has kind of changed over time because up until this generation, when we saw the re remaster, it was more of oh, we just added more content to the game, you know, or we or we fixed some of the bugs that were in the game that was plaguing people in the beginning. But now we're starting to see full blown masterpieces made out of games that we played, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And um, Resident Evil um, was one of those games that when you saw it, it was like. Not only did they just change the gameplay, they changed just the overall atmosphere that you were in when you were playing them. Um, they made iconic characters feel more uh, more menacing and more Those daunting. Nurses. Don't forget about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's as I'm trying to say. So when you see <laughs> when you see um, when you see a development house actually double down on just their remasters like they are with Resident Evil, it just gives you hope for games like Red, um, Silent Hill to actually do some of the same things. Yes. Um, I am a huge fan of like um, the Silent Hill franchise in general because you know, especially back then, because you know, horror games was such a really, really big thing back early in the '90s and stuff when all these games started coming out. And um, I think over the course of this generation, we kind of lost touch with that franchise in general. Uh, we've been always looking for that next Resident Evil game that was going to scare the bejesus pants out of you. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is something that if they wanted to dive deeper into that and actually own that lane um they definitely could be a part of that uh, the biggest thing is how would they uh how who, who's going to make these games i mean i mean there's a whole bunch of um a whole bunch of news out there about who's going to be helming the development of these games and stuff like that and i and then they're all pretty good i just want them to be done right and as long as they're done right, I think people will 100% enjoy getting back into them. Uh, I also think with Sony doing this, we were talking about this on, um, we were talking about this yesterday on, um, yesterday on, who show was we? Oh my God. See, this is what happens when you're on everybody's show. <laughs> Well, today's Friday. Are you on Salty Show yesterday? Yeah, I was on Salty Show yesterday. Damn, I'm, I'm sorry, Sean. And Salty had a really good point. He was asking about VR, and he was like, what would be a really good implementation of VR in the game you would like to see in VR? And Resident Evil 7 does one of the best implementations of VR where you could play the whole game through in VR. Can you imagine with Sony doing this, seeing um, Silent Hill being in that same vein? Because it's pretty much the same type of gameplay, same type of atmosphere. I can see them really doubling down 
Island making that some type of VR experience oh, added to so that. Good. Man, if they did something like that, I think um, that would be amazing because the template is already there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it gives them also another chance to get out of the Resident Evil shadow because that's something that it's always been a part of when you see Silent Hill. It's like, okay, it plays like Resident Evil. It kind of has the same atmosphere as Resident Evil, but it's not Resident Evil kind of because Resident Evil has a little bit higher of a budget. I think if this gives them a chance with the with the money that Sony could put behind it to Dude, really yeah. make it stand apart from what everybody thinks a Silent Hill game used to be. And for those people that didn't have a chance to play it on um, the original PlayStation and PlayStation 2 and stuff like that, um, this also could be something that could make it to PC and Sony could reap the benefits from there too. So you don't have to probably have a PlayStation to play it. So I think there's a bunch of different ways they can go with this, but I think just to answer the main question, am I excited to see something like Silent Hill come back? Absolutely. And I think a lot of other people are too. Yeah, I, I, agree. I agree. Uh remakes or remaster, like period, like at this point. Like they yeah, you know what? If, at this if, point, yeah. If they're done with respect to the IP and respect to the fan base that will support it, I am all for revisiting older titles. Uh, new, you know, speaking about revisiting older titles, you are someone <laughs> uh, <laughs> as old as I am. <laughs> um, you got to blow what, the dust off here before I put my mic on, right? That oh guy's old as dirt. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what are, what are your thoughts on on uh the potential of of, of us actually getting um a remaster or remake of a very very famous and classic IP in the form of Silent Hill? Well, you know what they say if you beg long enough you usually get what you want, right? But at the same time like yeah, it's a beloved franchise. I don't know if it ever hit quite the same um heights as the resident evil franchise has over the years and it's partly because you know like resident evil has been fairly consistent whereas silent hill has kind of had some ups and downs and it's kind of really been all over the place and it's been on various systems and they've had various versions I i'm not a huge fan of it I'm, I'm not i mean i'm not even a big resident evil fan to be honest with you like not not like you guys so um like for me, I could care less if they bring it out they do if they don't they don't but i'd say there's a good possibility but the worst thing is, is like, I don't, I don't know what's happening with Konami. Konami used to like during the Nintendo era in the eighties and Konami was huge. Konami was certainly one of the biggest publishers out there. And everybody remembers a lot of their games from back in the day, but over the past few years, their direction has changed and they haven't released a lot of, I think the only game in my collection that I own right now that, that comes from Konami is uh, metal gear solid five. So yeah. right, revengeance uh, that was done by Platinum. Right, yeah, I have that but, one too. Yeah, I forgot about that one. The stinker, the stinker is Metal Gear Survive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what no, never, story. never played that one. That one looked bad right from the get go. Terrible. So I mean, like I said, there's a possibility. Uh, I don't see any type of like Kojima connection again. I hope there was rumors to trying to link him to come back and make a game. I mean, Konami, as far as I know, they yeah. still have the IP. So. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with it. You know, if not, at some point, maybe they're better off just selling it and let somebody bring the, the franchise forward. But, um, yeah, there's a game someone just brought up in the chat. And Matt says Tony Hawk. Apparently, they're making, uh, what is that, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2? They're making, like, uh, like a new version of that same game. So, yes. like, a remaster. That was my, or that was my favorite of all the Tony Hawks because you could play Spider-Man in that. Yes. <laughs> good. So, yeah, bring that one back. But yeah, I, like I said, I don't care if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. I'm not, I'm not sitting here. I'm going to worry about it too much. But if they do, I would like, I would like to see them. Even if they go back and they have to do some of the older games, I would love to see them do what uh, Capcom has done with the Resident Evil series. Because honestly, playing Resident Evil two or I'm sure Resident Evil three with the way that they uh, remade those games is a lot more enjoyable than the way we remember them back oh, in the okay. day. No doubt about it, for sure. Right? Yeah. But like you yeah. said, they stayed true to the franchise. It, like they didn't, they didn't completely change everything the principle is the same the way you kind of go about the game is largely the same but obviously with better visuals better controls uh oh my god know, the visuals are outstanding imagine if they released uh, a new resident evil with those tank controls no don't do, don't do it <laughs> i would be i would cr i would crack my controller in half oh man <laughs> so even like going back and playing the old tomb raider games are so bad yeah. they, like you know to, to play them i just i couldn't even do it i tried getting back and it's like oh my god these are bad they're, they're terrible yeah right? no, absolutely 
Yeah, eight eight way directional uh, directional movement in a three D based game is not, not good. Not good. <laughs> not good. No, it's certainly so, not. But yeah, I'll leave it at that, man. Let's, hopefully, they they bring it out again. But like I said, it's for the fans. You know, speaking of remakes, this is why I love this man, Sir X Men. Drops two dollars super chat, and he says this: I want, and I I want that to be plural because my God. This is a great statement. I want a remaster of SSX and Tricky. Yes, yes, that needs to happen. First of all, my brother, Neo Mental, and I loved – we would sit there in front of our – back in the days, 36-inch – I think it was a Magnavox TV, uh, the old big one that you needed like eight people to help you lift uh, and play Tricky for – Hours upon hours. What what a great! I mean, they they've released a few SSXs past that. They've never been the same. The original was a monster, and Tricky was incredible. If they, I don't know, I think EA actually owns the rights to that. I wish they'd do a remaster. It, it, I, I'd play it in, in a freaking heartbeat. All the other SSX, eh, not so much. But you know what? Real quick, we're closing in on two hours. This has been a great show. It's been, a, you know what? It was about gaming. It was fun. A, a lot, lot of banter with the chat. Chat's been really uh, very boisterous. I love it. We're, we, everyone just kind of hanging out and enjoying themselves. But real quick, uh, I have to just address this to Noof. Yes, they do have a Panzer Dragoon for 39 bucks. It is a cart, but oh. what they have, which I just ordered. What, if I remember when I went silent, I muted <laughs> my mic. I actually just pre-ordered the Panzer Dragon limited edition that comes in the Sega Saturn case. Oh. Which is dope. It's 60 bucks. So I pre-ordered that. And at the same time, I took it upon myself to pre-order the uh, Genesis edition of Streets of Rage for the Switch. I didn't get it for the PlayStation. And the PlayStation version is kind of it's, it might be doper if I if that's a word, because it says Genesis on the side of the box, which is kind of dope, but I didn't want it for the PlayStation. I wanted it for my Switch. And even though it comes in a Genesis box. I think that one actually comes with the Genesis cartridge that goes around. It's like a clamshell, which is dope. Uh, but you know what? Let's get everyone out of here. First of all, I want to thank everyone in the chat for being here. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please hit the like button. Also, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if it's not too much effort, if it's not too much trouble, please put this out there on social media. I don't know if the uh, if the notifications went out. Um, but if they didn't and you can help, you know, power the show by letting people know that we did go live would be greatly appreciated. Of course, I want to thank all of the outstanding and very generous super chats that have come in. Really thank you from the bottom of my heart. And of course, I couldn't do the show without having amazing people to have on the panel. And I did that today. So let's start with, of course, a panel regular. He has a big show coming up in the afternoon. I believe it's 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He is our resident trophy hunter, defender of the realm known as PlayStation, but also, and quite frankly, a, 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 a gamer at heart. Please, uh, BitCloud, tell everyone where they can follow you on social media. But more importantly, check out your YouTube channel and what you got going on today. Yeah, show is fire, man. As always, good job, Mr. Boom. Shout out to everybody on the panel. Good talking to Graphic God, uh, Noof, obviously, Forte, my brother. It's always a pleasure. Um, yes, RGT Podcast is happening a little earlier today. It's going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You guys oh, are interested. Nice. See you guys uh, there. Uh, you guys can follow me on YouTube at Big Claw Gaming as well as Twitter. Same name. Yeah, big topics, a lot to go over. Really, it's a big recap. I'm going to try to get everybody <laughs> through the week, and a lot of people have been asking. So, no. <laughs> Okay. But um, yeah, some of these topics are pretty. I'm warning you, some of these topics today are gonna be a little uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they're, they're, gonna be, they're potentially salty, but it's gonna be interesting. You always run a good show, guy, and uh, you always have a great topic. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, real quick, uh, I know that he wasn't, he didn't have a scheduled appearance. His plane ticket has been held up. But because he is the governor, he has his own helicopter. So Arnold, you know, obviously before we get Noof Nukem in here, you know, with with the world in flux, what have you been up to? Are you safe? Boom, it's always a great time to be here. I'm always in the background just watching the show. And I just wanted to say that right now, I think I've washed my hands so many times that pretty soon I'm going to hold it up and it's going to look just like the Terminator. I will have no skin there. 
Oh you, you guys are probably the same. <laughs> Hell, I think I've washed my balls the most I have in 30 years. It's, it's crazy. Uh, the world is going crazy out there. So, But I do want everybody to just stay home, stay safe. Don't even get to the chopper. Just stay away from the chopper. Stay away from the people. Just stay in your house. Eat. Play games. Lift some barbells. Do something. But just stay away and keep clean. We want everybody to be safe so you can get out there and catch my next movie. Because I'm always getting older and my hair is starting to turn gray. You know, but I'm still making these movies. So I want you to get out there and do that. It's good to well, be here. Be safe, everybody. Well, definitely appreciate you being here. And of course, like I said, to, to you know, th thanks for the uh, your checks in the mail. Let me just say that. Hopefully, you got the other two. From your last appearances, they weren't much, that but they were so immortal. It's, it's ridiculous. I remember that guy kicked him in the back and didn't even phase him. Oh, yeah. he, the guy, the guy's just a monster. But you know, <laughs> Luke, obviously, you know, you have a great show. Uh, you move times, you work with Primal Eve. She's an amazing yep. podcaster, more, more so than an amazing human being. Um, and uh, I love what you do. It is a show that's a little edgy, but I think that the world needs shows like that where you don't take it too seriously and you just have a bunch of fun. Uh, also, of course, you are a community leader because you're always out there pushing the envelope and playing games with others. And I love that about you. And I love the fact that, you know what? You don't pull any fucking punches. And you know, when you're going to curse, you're going to curse. And when you don't, you don't. Do me a favor. Tell everyone where they can follow you on social media, but also check out your YouTube channel. Well, first of all, you got one thumbs down in a chat, and it's probably because I showed up today. So I do nah. apologize for that, boom, and I do apologize for me dropping a few f bombs from time That's to time. Okay. I try to keep it very PG, and I know this, you know, more family. So I do apologize when I get a little bit uh, edgy. Uh, it's just it's force of habit, I guess you can say. And sometimes I get riled up. But uh, in the meantime, I do appreciate you being here. This was an amazing show. Always great to hang out with the Graphic God and Gaming Forte, BitCloud, and obviously yourself, boom. It's always I'm always honored when you ask me to show up and. I, uh, my, my shift has been uh, moved this week at work. Uh, they've cut back my hours uh, because of everything that's happening. So that's why I was able to make the show today. I don't go to work for another little bit here. Um, but yeah, great chat as well. Uh, again, you can check out Gaming After Dark. It's on Tuesday evenings. It's generally at 10 Eastern time right after RDX kind of wraps up. Um, that sort of thing. And I got to give a big shout out because we managed to dig... One of our good favorites out of hibernation this past week, the attack, the glitcher came out to be on the show and it was a great oh, time. Wow. So if you, if you missed it, go back and check out the replay. It was always good to hear glitch. Really glitch is one of the nice guys in the community and, and I've enjoyed podcasting with him. So a big shout out to him for coming out to be on the show this past week. And obviously the primal Eve has been having some crazy internet troubles. I don't know what it is, but like somewhere in the show, she will crash and then I lose her all together, which is probably why we're going to end up bringing in a third, a third co-host at some point in time, because uh, you know, I, it's hard to carry the show constantly by yourself, kind of it's, the old way. It's, it's, back it's, out. Right. It's, it's very difficult. It is. So, uh, but I'll keep you posted on that. But anyway, guys, Tuesday nights uh, after RDX and after the amazing podcast by Graphic God as well, guys. Don't check. Uh, make sure you check out Retro Renegades. A lot of good dudes over there. Again, one of those easygoing podcasts, always having a lot of fun. Uh, retro gameplay in the background, all that good stuff. But anyway, uh, and make sure, guys, again, that you're watching all Boom shows. Uh, he's fantastic. And I will catch you all later. Yeah, thanks for being here, Noob. Super appreciated. And of course, uh, Gaming Forte. Let's get you in here. You obviously have been very busy as a podcaster. You also have been very busy as a gamer. Uh, you are definitely someone that I look to for uh, being a positive light in the community because you're always out there, you know, giving inspirational, uh, you know, speeches. And you're, you know, our inside man for everything GameStop. Do me a favor, dude. Tell everyone. Well, they can follow you on social media, but also check out you and your podcast, Round Robins. Oh, man, definitely. Um, really appreciate the invite, man. It's been a while since I've been on Breakfast with Boom. Got a chance to crack it up with my boy, Ryan. Don't get a chance to do shows enough with him um, and Graphic God and everybody else. Graphic God did my first gamer pick, man. I, I will always, always mm -hmm. sing that man's praises because he does an amazing job with all these people's um, profiles and everything that he does with them. So shout out to him. But um, as always, it's Gaming Forte on YouTube and Twitter. Um, the easiest way to contact is on Twitter for the most part. But other than that, man, it's um, the um, Basement Radio Podcast Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. with my boy Slow Mo Backslide, Enrique B Money, and Eric Jackson. You know, come check us out on that show. Um, we also, you already know Boom's got, you know, Boom with Friends on Monday night. So, <laughs> you know, he, he promotes that every day. And um, it's always a great time being on the podcast with them. And then one more podcast tonight 
right, we got Crossfire with my boy Mooch. As long as he's feeling well, we'll be doing that one tonight. So check us out tonight, 7 p.m. Each, yep, 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. And uh, I really appreciate everybody coming through and chalking it up with us for the last two hours. Well, thank you for being here as always. And obviously, you know, I've already been working on since Wednesday for a Monday night show, unless, of course, something happens Monday and ruins my six hours of work so far, because that <laughs> happens has happened more times than not, where I write an entire show and I just, you know, you know, tough titty, so to speak. You know, you get, what are you going to do? But you know what? I waited for the end for uh, the graphic god, uh, my brother from Can uh, from Canada. I did that because I wanted to bring up, of, of course, not only his stout artwork, uh, his 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 skilled hand is not to be believed. And obviously, you're seeing I bring up the banner once again. Graphic God Productions, uh, if you are someone like myself, a small YouTuber looking to start your channel and you don't know anything about artwork or how to, you know, position things or who would even talk to graphic god your guy uh he has helped me in ways more ways and more times than i have toes and fingers to count on um and he's very knowledgeable but more importantly he's a good dude and his prices for his work are reasonable much much more reasonable than some of the other ones that really kind of clobber you and i'm not i mean again everyone's you know our work is worth what it's worth so i'm never gonna challenge what someone charges but Jay does good work, and he works with you, and he listens to you as the customer. Uh, Jay, do me a favor, dude. Obviously, tell everyone where they can follow you on social media. Check out Retro Renegades, and also maybe stop by and ask a question or two about getting some original artwork. Oh, I appreciate you even inviting me to the podcast. Boom! I was really, really happy that I was able to attend with you guys. Um, this is the first time I've been on anything with BitCloud, so uh, it was really great to get to know you a little bit, BitCloud. Like um, you can uh, find me on Twitter at graphic underscore God. If you want to hit me up for any kind of graphics, go to xboxgamerpicks.com. Um, like I said, I'm on Twitter. My DMs are open. Come chat. You know, uh, send me a message. Ask me if you you know if you need anything. Sometimes I do stuff for the sake of doing it, just because I. I like to learn how to do things on my own. I like to have fun with uh, with projects. I'm, I'm a creative person by heart. Um, I like to be creative. I like to try new things. So if you're looking for stuff, hit me up. Tuesday nights we do um, retro renegades, which is very very loose. <laughs> if you want to put it, uh, if you want to give it any kind of a term there, because we don't really have topics. We go out there, we play old games, and we play them live. We're not playing the we're not playing a uh, pre-recorded gameplay or anything. This is live gameplay happening. Um, we talk as if we're a bunch of 14 year olds at the arcade. Sometimes we spew some ex expletives. We drink <laughs> a lot of beer. Some people are partaking in, in other types of uh, recreational uh, habits. Um, <laughs> but other than that, we're having fun. We're playing games and that's the whole point of it all. So if you guys are tired of the whole retro or sorry, if you're tired of the of the whole console war bullshit and you want to go somewhere that we rarely talk about console war sometimes it you know pops up in topics but it's only because it's relevant at that moment but if you're just looking for a place to hang out have fun with your friends tuesday nights retro renegades check out my you uh, my um twitter banner and you'll find all my information right there Nice, nice. Well, listen, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Obviously, I want to just close out with a couple of things. First of all, as we go into week three of the C-19 situation, uh, it seems that we might be turning for the better. Uh, and I think that is because people are starting to understand that in order to beat this, we got to listen to what they're saying. And staying home and being safe and being kind is one of the most important things you can do. Uh, right now, as a gamer, and there's a lot of us out there, and millions of us, we are living the gamer's life. This is the this is the fantasy island dream come true. Stay <laughs> home, play games, and hopefully your company is uh, is paying. Uh, you know, paying you to, to do that. You know, as yeah. and obviously, if you are in the United States, we should have the stimulus packages uh, much sooner than later. That is certainly going to help a lot of people who are in desperate need right now. Uh, and I also want to close out with two things. And, and I think that they're more relevant now 
than ever before. And these are things that my dad taught me when I was a kid. I live by this. I've lived by this as a cop. I live this. I live by this as a human. And uh, I, I like to close out every show with it. And one, uh, it treat others how you want to be treated. I think right now that's super relevant. And also, again, super relevant. It doesn't cost anything to be nice. So be nice. Don't be that d bag. And again, treat others how you yourself would like to be treated. And I guarantee you, man, you're going to have a great time to live by those rules. Have a great weekend, everyone. And we'll see you next Friday on the newest episode of, of course, Breakfast with Boom. Take care and have a great weekend. <laughs>